Hi. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Jackie. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> There's our typical entry. Wouldn't it be great if we had like an entry that was all scripted and people would feel like, oh, we've landed in the familiar spot. Yeah, it could just be like, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun. That's our theme music? Yeah, it's like a shark. <laughs> all right, let me be open-minded. Why, why did you choose that for our theme music? Because <laughs> I can't sing and I have no rhythm. And so oh. <laughs> that was easy enough to, for me to like, Dun, dun. I mean, that was just so incredibly, yeah. Well, I mean, because I think that everyone is afraid of this podcast, right? Like, they'll be like, oh, it's me. just kidding. Oh, you were trying to create some, like, drama. Suspense? Like, yes. what will Caitlin say this time? That kind of thing? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Because I'm sure they're not afraid of me. Not at all. And, you know, but maybe once they learn for those people who are just tuning in, this is a knitting podcast called Caddy Jack's Knits. Welcome. I'm Lynn. And I'm Jackie. And we're on Zoom. And we love Zoom. I just learned that the reason why the light is so bad is that Zoom, in order to be on Wi-Fi, has to compress so much information that one of the things that leaves out is color. It's like, oh, that's not necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. But the good so news. You're saying that we're not like, our colors right now are not as fabulous as we know them to be because you, my friend, are a beacon. Thanks. Still, thank you. And thank you. But still, no, the <laughs> color, we all know it has this pall of gray, which yeah. is the perfect like COVID pall. Although we have good news. And the good news is that it is February 28th and tomorrow is March. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, whatever. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the weather, but can I just say I have my windows open and I just got new linen curtains and they're blowing in the breeze? Nice. No, please say that. I know it's really, I, they're just like in the background. But like, so Caitlin is coming to us from Tennessee. Yep. I'm in Knoxville. And I am in Wisconsin and it is like as gray as it gets today, but it's on a warming trend. So yep. I'm optimistic. Caitlin's, that, that was the thing, Caitlin, actually, I was thinking about you. So by the way, before we just dive into deep dive on Caitlin's psyche, well, <laughs> You can, everybody can leave now. <laughs> Welcome. And this is a knitting podcast and we have a special treat for you today. We when, do. You can fast forward to the special treat if you'd like. And that is Donna from Black Mountain Yarns. She is going to join us later today with her knitting bestie, Karen, who we yeah. met on uh, our, which, which one was it? Was it the, I feel like, you no. Know, what I don't know was it the pajama party? I either the I think it was bingo. Oh, bingo! You're right. It was bingo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're coming to talk about knitting friendships during this time because they live across the country from each other, and yeah. they've been able to lift each other's spirits and keep each other inspired. And we can't wait to have them on and talk about it. I know. I think what's exciting about it is that you and I have not met them either, right? But there's like all these like, you know, strings of, of connection. And um, I look forward to sort of, you know, seeing that, that relationship grow. So it's just, I, I just think the power of Instagram and our YouTube channel and all that, it's just like, we, I know we talk about it at nauseum, but it is pretty amazing, the connections we've made with people and just really deep connections. Um, so that, that's just really nice. So I'm super excited to, to chat with them. Yeah. And I think the two things that I'm super interested, if I could like create a theme for this episode, please do. It would be inviting mystery, like as in inviting the unexpected as in the, you know, possibility, because I feel like that's what we kind of crave right now are 
um, opportunities, unexpected, unbidden opportunities for joy. Like to turn a corner and then there be a fantastic flower shop and just get to see, like, I, I think we're all very primed for um, pleasure because we've been bracing so much. And I, I just optim, this, this episode is coming to you like in the epicenter for me of sort of a blah non-pleasure day. So it's very exciting for me to see if I can make some joy out of what I've got. If yeah. that makes any sense? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have full faith that you can do it, Jackie Rose. Well, and, and I wonder if that starts with a little bit of, of gratitude too, you know, like just like, thank God, think about it, Caitlin, like you've been away for a year now, but yeah. I don't feel like estranged from you at all. You sure? I mean, I, I've talked to you every day. And if <laughs> anything, you're getting more, you're having like uh, too much, Jackie. Is that what I, is that, is that a thing? Too much Jackie? Who decides that, me or you? Uh, that would be James, maybe. No, James is. He doesn't mind? He doesn't, James is so easygoing. He could care less. I think he's just happy that I'm entertained and not driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, today was the hardest, oh, I, um, I see a, I see a hawk flying out the window. I, I'm, my, my, what I'm staring at is my picture, did you like how I said that? Picture window um, in my living room and blue sky and there's birds flying over. But anyway, um, today was a little bit hard because we planned the podcast mostly because we, on Sunday, because we knew it was going to be rainy and whatever. And it ends up being a beautiful day. So he went hiking without me, which is kind of a first. So I do love you, Jackie Rose, but I do wish I was hiking too. Yeah. I and this is cute because it was Caitlin's plan, not mine. No, it was not your plan. Yeah. So Caitlin's just a little bit like, and that's what I mean. Like, it's a, that's a classic case in point, Caitlin, yeah. is like the expectation of it's finally a beautiful day. I could go hiking with my husband yeah. and I could be committed to this day being terrible, or I can look for what's good in it. And I'm looking. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's all good. Um, but yeah, no, James, I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's funny because you and I FaceTime multiple times a day, right? And that just, it's, it's like our new normal. I mean, it's not like when we were in Madison together, I mean, we worked in the same building and we rarely saw each other unless I happened to be passing you. By your classroom so um it is kind of i feel like we've upped our friendship game just in terms of total contact right like like the no brush the hair not brushed look kind of thing yeah and i yeah i've gotten to see you brush your teeth a lot <laughs> i i i, I just I won't say the other thing <laughs> the other things I've to whatever I don't it's care. like we're roommates. Yeah, and the point is, the point is, is I might upgrade and get a quieter electric toothbrush. But I do have like the Pavlov's dog thing where it goes on, and I think I should call Caitlin. I know how much she likes this. Right. Or the second you call me, you're like, I have to go to the bathroom. Right. Okay. She got it out. She got I it did. out. I did. Mean, Caitlin, my blush isn't blended. Oh well. I well, don't worry because on Zoom, it's just a pallor. A white face. <laughs> so like a that was thing one was mystery. And thing two, which is related to that, is I would say growth and intuition. And where you, I, I know, but here's where I'm going with that. Okay. Is that. You took this leap of faith of moving to Tennessee and I've been able to see a lot, and so maybe we'll talk about it during the podcast, a lot yeah. of, you know, how that's been working out for you and the changes that, like, I feel like you're manifesting it in what you're wearing and what's behind you, et cetera. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe we'll get into some knitting content and then, like, weave in my questions for you. Because I just... I, I didn't know you were going to be interviewing me. Well, you've just grown so much recently as a knitter, I think. Oh, thank you. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. And wherever, wherever you want to take this interview, Jackie, I'm fine with it. I, I just, also feel like 
the way you feel in your home and the way you, you know, all of those things yeah. are pretty amazing. And so she was talking about giving us a home tour soon. Yes, I feel like, I mean, I do, I will, I will do it, but there's parts of like, oh, if I could just tweak this room in this room. So I do feel like it's coming together and I'm happy to share it with people. Um, I, I think there are some people that love seeing other people's spaces. And I'm in a completely different place than most people. And I'm not trying to yeah. have it be all about me, but I've been teaching out of my bedroom. And so my space has been very impacted in that. Yeah best way <laughs> right yeah for mm -hmm. sure yeah okay someday, cool. someday rapunzel you'll get to put your hair down and get out of the tower mm -hmm. exactly. right so right. let's talk about what you're wearing your finished object okay my finished object is the plum which i showed last time and i was about here um so i um am so happy with it. It's a Junko Okamoto. It's yeah, Junko Okamoto. Um, it's a reversible sweater. So I I've been tending to wear it this way, which I think is considered the back, but um, because I like this sort of um, boat neck, it is a one size fits most sweater. Um, there you know, so there's no sizing to it whatsoever. So it is a boxy. I'll see if I can get back here. It is a boxy look. And you can see the back. Can you see the back? Yes. The back, uh, the other neckline is a V, um, but it just has this beautiful yoke to it. Um, and uh, for those of you that saw me freaking out last time, it was because I was helical knitting and I had one skein, additional skein left, and it was darker. So it is, it's there, but it's so like, who cares? Okay. Um, I, the sleeves are just this beautiful detail with the, uh, you know, the cable running through it. The cable runs down the side. I used La Bienname Modim, um, and Jackie's is, version is behind her. Um, my color is the Quartz Fume, so it's sort of this gray purple. And then the Sansa is what I use for the plum, which is your body. And it's so funny, on my screen, your Sansa looks pink and to me mine looks white it's so weird how color um i absolutely adore this sweater i'm so this was definitely an epic knit for me it was like one of the first it was the first sweater in my queue i actually contacted um the woman i think her name's linsky on instagram she does i think she's a, her own pattern designer but i remember seeing her version of it the first time first thing i saved on instagram so i i messaged her to say you are my inspiration so um but your version is just gorgeous too well that's what i mean though about the human psyche is there's yeah. something that you aspire to and now you're sitting in it i know. You have to take a moment to go and even like the despair you felt mm -hmm. when you joined the yarn, you know, you, I, that's a fabulous thing about knitting is you just yeah. do those things. Right, right. But yeah, if we could just, if life could just be like that, right? We go. But, but it is like you, it is you rehearse, it's like reading a novel. You, knitting is, you rehearse working through difficulties and then yeah. you become more resilient and yeah. more risk taker. So true. I mean, I, I do, um, I think there there's part of my psyche with, with regard to knitting that I feel like there are certain patterns or certain techniques I haven't really um, been adventurous enough, adventurous enough to try. And this to me was definitely, I felt like it was in that category, I think because of the, not the color work so much, but the lace work and the charting. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I said this before, but really if you take it, line by line or row by row in the chart you know so you screw up a row you rip it back you know you start the row again and that that is something where you just have to persevere and i think we've all been there with our knitting of like you, you make a mistake and you're like do i really want to fix that or do i want to go on and i think we all know that voice if the voice says it's gonna bother you you need to go back and fix right. it right and um, off topic, but about yeah. the fit is we can all wear this in my house. Sally, oh. Lily, I, we've all worn it. We all wear it different ways. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I love the boxy quality to it. And I think that 
personally, I think our yarn choice for it was so good because the Modim has this, I mean, we said it's like alive. It's just, it's my first introduction, I think, to rustic knitting. We used it with our um, Cavalgante sweaters, um, and, but it's really light. Um, so it's, it's a beautiful yarn if you haven't tried it yet. Yeah. But it, I, yeah, I love it. I love that there's, it made me start to, this, this part here and the way it was shaped made me start to look for other patterns that had that similar um, shape too. Cause I just love, you know me, I like a wide neckline. I don't mind if my straps show, you can wear it, you know, off your shoulder, you can flip it around tuck it in. So it, it's great. I, I think the only thing I would probably change um, if I was to do it again, which I will not be doing it again, is to shorten the sleeves. I mean, they're meant to be long. Let's see if mm. I can get, they're meant to be long. I mean, they are past my fingertips. Um, that is definitely the look of the sweater. It's meant to have this sort of bunchiness. So I think that people should think carefully about how they want the sleeves to fall on them. Whereas everything else in the pattern, I just went according to, this is going to be a boxy oversized sweater. Um, so that would be the one thing I would recommend just thinking about because mm -hmm. it has a really long cuff. So you could certainly, you know, shorten some of it mm -hmm. easily. Good to, good to know. Good to know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom mode, good to know. Yeah. I mean, you didn't alter yours at all. Mm -mm. You know, and I have narrow shoulders. So it was yeah. interesting. That's again, the thing about knitting friends is that um, Rebecca from Clinton Hill Cashmere was on and she was talking about the off the shoulder look mm -hmm. and saying that for her, she thinks that's sexy to show yeah. a bit of skin in this area of your body that is, you know, more angular or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, and it's just a style to experiment with and, and embrace because, yeah. so, but it's like, if you're an elementary school teacher, that's hard to wear to school. So yeah. that's the, that's why that sweater doesn't get worn a lot by me. Yeah. You can wear it out in the world. Right. And, um, and as far as like, have you considered buying, I'm sorry, I'm just going to ask, cause we talked about it on the last podcast, yeah. like a plum, bra that you think is really pretty that would be exposed? Um, I have not bought anything or, or. I mean, it is COVID, but it does seem like that could be fun. Yeah. I, I, the thing is, um, I don't generally like to have wear wool sweaters without something underneath it. So I, I almost feel like I'd rather buy a camisole that has some beautiful straps to it because I, I don't, I mean, even though this is not itchy, I, I'm really sensitive to how things feel, yeah. not necessarily because I have sensitive skin, but more sensitive like touch. Yeah, I wear that with my yoga tanks. Yeah, so I think it would, it would be something like that. But yes, I should give it some thought and you can send me your resources and links and I'll think about buying them. Perfect, great. <laughs> Jackie knows I'm the most pain in the ass person when it comes to shopping because especially online because I don't pull the trigger do I but you did recently did I I think so yeah okay um well Can we talk about your fabulousness yes so this is in the latest Amari Sue Mm -hmm. And this is all going off memory. I can't believe I didn't prepare for this. I think the yarn's called Genmo. It's it is. Japanese. It's the most fabulous yarn. It is, it is 100% um, merino wool, and it's like a, just a little soft fuzz of yarn. And then there's one strand that is wraps around it that holds it together so it doesn't yeah. just all fall apart. But it is the lightest, fluffiest yarn ever. And it, the colors are amazing. Yeah, I'm and trying to look it up right now. Okay. And this is a Kimi. Yeah. And of course, our light is terrible, but I will stand up so you can see it. It has these beautiful stitch patterns. Like, look, this is so funny when you try to show a sweater. Yeah. 
but the the designer is japanese and i have to admit that i really felt like every like i don't know if you can see the close-ups like yeah you can okay like these stitch patterns just felt so unusual and, and like i would just say i felt like i was doing something that i felt like it had a japanese aesthetic to it mm -hmm. that felt really nice like it felt like i was in taking a moment to indulge in a different sort of design modality if that makes any yeah. sense it felt very good and of course this stitch was very fun which was some sort of like it's funny with the yarn the yarn just sort of frays it away you know right <laughs> they were little loops right they're loops but you can't really tell so because the yarn just gets so fuzzy and i'm sorry for the quality of the the video here but it's showing up it's beautiful okay. You know what it kind of reminds me of um, with all those beautiful stitches? It seems to me like this incredible, almost simple silhouette with, you know, all the stitch variations. It reminds me of a sampler, like a, like a um, embroidery sampler. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you've got a little bit of all of these wonderful stitch designs. Yeah, and the proportions are so lovely. So I did modify it just a bit because I wanted it shorter than it yeah. was. So I think I went down two needle sizes and then I added a motif just to get the length in the arm that I wanted. You yeah. know, you can when I stand, these fall at my wrists, but right now they don't. But there it is. Because the pattern, you you definitely, I mean, yours seems modified in terms of the fit because you went down, because when you look at the pattern, the designer's version of it, it's definitely more of a boxier fit. And I feel like this was dropped lower. Yeah. Like I, I wanted it above my bust. Yeah. And yeah. I even liked, I liked how it left stockinette right here to let mm -hmm. this, I, I just, think it's an amazing design. So the stockinette gives it this pause and then you can go into this motion. Yeah. It just was such a such brilliant proportion. It I is. think it's a I it's one I would definitely knit again, maybe just like in an A crew or another color because mm -hmm. it is basically uh, just utterly fabulous. Like I, I love it to death. And um, the color of course is like gives you life this time of year. I'm so jealous. I definitely to knit it and this was my first cast on for 2021 and it, it was the color of the year so oh right yeah, yellow and gray right yeah yeah so yeah. it felt like and i i mean i immediately wanted it in yellow as soon as i saw it yeah um, and and i really highly recommend actually kind of doing it in this yarn because the mm -hmm. yarn itself is such a perfect marriage to the pattern just the whole buoyancy of it yeah, well, we're in, and so you bought yours from Imarisu's shop, and I actually <laughs> went on this morning because I was like, I'm going to buy, because I want to do it in the, the green color thing, and they were, they had three skeins left, so I think they've had a huge surge of interest because of the magazine, um, but Spots Tree Co. is going to be carrying the yarn, and they're doing some cute gift packages with it. I was going to show what that, but anyway, um, Let's see if I can get a good photo. So um, Espostri Co is doing these little gift bags with it, and but they're doing it for this sweater version with this an upside down photo. But um, yeah, so that's exciting to know that you can get it elsewhere. And I think that's going to be available in March. So yeah. So Espostri Co, reserve me nine skeins of the green, please. <laughs> um, you got to have some pull, right? I, I told, I want to knit the sweater that they're featuring to the yeah. Cafe Midori. Yeah, it's, that one's called the, um, uh, hold on, the Twinkle sweater. Yeah, and such a bold graphic design. You see that? So that's the green I'm hoping to do mine. Yeah, I want to do that exact sweater. Really? In the green too? Well, I don't have to do it in green. But no, I, I, I definitely love the black yoke and the white. Yeah color could be like blue maybe oh, yeah they have, i mean the color um they have really great bright beautiful yeah so that's exciting well i absolutely adore yours and i do too like it's yeah, just, i totally want to knit it so 
I honestly, and I had so much fun. We put, if you really want to see the color better, I mean, all right now, I just look like I glow and it's fine, but no, it's on it, our Instagram too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and your Ravelry has great photos too. Yeah. Yeah. So super happy yeah. with this. Yay you. Yeah. I yeah. like our colors together though. Yeah. Kind of very, cool. Um, yellow and purple. That's kind of spring-like. Like, yeah. Oh, this is very crocus-like. I so need to get some flowers. I know. Well, can I hear you can have yeah, these. Show us yours because you did get some. I did get some. So we have um, this adorable flower company here called Flourish Flower Truck and they have this vintage little pickup truck that they've converted to a traveling flower store um, and you can kind of they'll they'll have different pop-ups anyway but these are anemones I just did you hear what I said no take pictures next time you go to the truck I will yeah well the, so they're just starting their season um, this week um, so they, this one, you did pre-orders on Instagram and then they had different pickup locations. So they weren't there, but yes, next time I see the truck in person, so cute. Yeah. Cause uh, our florist has been delivering flowers during COVID, but uh, I love the idea of, I mean, I don't know how they deliver them, but to deck their vehicle out a little bit. Yeah, no, it's so they're, it's like this mint green truck. I mean, it's the cutest thing ever. So, okay. um, anyway, so yes, the flowers are or everything right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sorry. They actually had an article in the New York Times about flowers and how they're like a COVID expression of love mm -hmm. and joy. And so I I didn't do it yet, but I absolutely need some flowers in my yeah. life. So I just, in Madison, where I am, all the like flower shops that I used to go to that had exquisite, interesting varieties yeah gone. and yeah. It, yeah so it's more like go to there is a new i remember there was one place that opened up you know just a few years ago and i feel like it had the name red in their their name yeah, i remember that downtown somewhere they have some beautiful things so check it out jackie okay i'll check it out yeah okay i'll check it out i will say my floral style is that the one that you're talking about was very formal and I really like the whole meadow style with like yeah. heat in it and you know just unexpected plant material I, I mean the whole gorgeous abundance of nature oh yeah I know I've gone down this rabbit hole of um man we can link it in the show notes but there's this beautiful company called the floral society and they do some beautiful instagram um videos instagram tv of of their floral arrangements and the same kind of thing just beautiful branches but the other thing that i love about their designs is they have these gorgeous simple white bowls low bowls with a little frog in the center of it and they just stick a few branches and so I, I, I gave a strong hint to Jane for my birth, James for my birthday, like, honey, you should buy this bowl for me. <laughs> so, um, but I, I just, um, they're the Japanese, and I'm blanking on it, the Japanese style of floral arrangement where it's just, do you know the name of it? Um, mm -hmm. Where it's just, they have a flower frog and it's just a few branches of things. Like, I just love the simplicity of that. So I'm looking forward to the garden springing its, beautifulness so I can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you could do some forest branches right now for sure. I actually- like Just to find out what's in your yard. Yeah, true. Well, I do, um, I, I, <laughs> once I do the tour, so like this arrangement here, I, I think I've said before, I, I'll go foraging in my neighborhood when there are storms and people cut back their branches. I think this is a red maple tree that I found the, and, and I didn't really mean for it to um, sprout, but I have noticed that the buds are getting bigger. Um, but then I, do, I did pull down a couple branches of our cherry tree, much to James's dismay. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I have those sitting, and that's the first time I've ever forced anything. So they're little green buds. So I'm hoping in a couple days there'll oh, be yeah. some cherries. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Gonna be great. And, and you also got magnolia leaves. Yeah. Well, and I found some pussy. Well, I mean, it's just like, uh, 
telling you people move to the south there's a lot of good things here mm -hmm. so. So, by the way, I am coming to visit Caitlin this summer. I'm just yes. You're, well, no, you're coming to live with me. That's exactly. I have my <laughs> own bedroom, and I'm staying as long as they'll keep me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as you, you know, pick up after yourself, we're good. I can, I can make. James doesn't like my biscuits, but whatever. Ooh, James. Whatever. Yeah, I like. He, them. he won't eat them. He just has his. He likes his mama's biscuits. His mama didn't even make the biscuits that was there. Right. Okay, fine. You know, right. you can't contend with childhood memories. No, right. James, but James is also highly picky in, in crazy, I want to say stupid ways. <laughs> He's, He's not, not here. Sorry, honey. Um, no, but yes, I. you can make biscuits for us anytime. Okay, so... We are on to continuing the theme with Caitlin and her whole like adventures of knitting. I mean, I have a lot here, but I that went didn't go well, but I think I just got so let's move on to the beautiful, beautiful piece right behind you. Okay, well, I will say that um, when Karen and Donna come on later, we'll probably be talking about a little bit more because um karen is also knitting this so this is the kala shawl uh by moonstruck knits natasha hornby who is a genius of all geniuses if we haven't talked about her enough mm -hmm. um and i this to me was inspired by debbie korb's version um once i saw hers i was like oh i need it and i and i was beyond fabulous yes hers yeah um i i think what i i it's probably it's definitely one of the probably the most challenging knit I've done so far because there's a lot of charts. Um, it's a lot of texture, which I, that's what I was totally drawn to. It has broken rib. Can you say um, the, where you got the yarn from and what yarn? Oh, yeah. So the yarn. So I'm you. So it is. Um, it's kind of sport to decay the pattern. So if you look at the pattern, there's a lot of people that have stranded mohair. So originally I was going to strand mohair with it, but it just didn't, I didn't like the way it looked. So this is um, Dorera Natura yarn. You and what? You no, and it, I got it from the knitting loft. So, um, and I did buy the mohair to go with it, but it just, like I said, didn't quite work. So I decided just to, I did a, swatch just to see more about the drape and the look of the fabric so i am knitting it according to the pattern which was on size seven needles which is great i think seven is my perfect like favorite size knit needle um and this yarn sorry i'm leaning down to pick up the, the vault um it's gonna get blown out but um it is definitely i think it's coming up pretty close on screen yeah, it's, like a dusty pink dusty pink and there's sort of this gray quality like there's there's definitely some fuzzy grayness like pink on zoom exactly pink yeah. on zoom um i have never knit with um Dorera natura I, I don't know if i'm saying i'm sure I'm probably not saying it right but oh my goodness i think maybe if i had to pick one yarn to knit with this is it people i mean it okay. is it is so, well, first of all, it's broken rib, so it does have that kind of brioche squishiness to it. So for me, the tactile quality of this knit is just off the charts good, but this yarn is unbelievable to work with. Um, I, I got five skeins of it, which according to the pattern would have been enough yardage, but I'm on my last skein and I have about this much more to go and there's a Pico bind off. So people, order extra. Um, and sorry to say, if there are people out there going, oh my God, I love that color. That's the perfect color. So just so you know, there are, seems to be only two skeins of quartz left in the world and they're both coming to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so knitting loft was out of the quartz. I would have gone back and supported them because we love you ladies. Um, but I, you know, I don't know fly is strange because I had the same thing happen with the color Jeanne. It was like out everywhere and then yeah and it could be just the shortage of, of wool I mean who knows but of course it was like so I um I ordered one from somewhere in England I don't even know the name of the store and I ordered one skein from a Spas Tree Cove so I think I should be fine 
but I will say I also in case anybody you, I know you've talked about this before but like you you're like freaking out because you've invested you know however many hours in in you know knitting something to only go oh I'm gonna run out so I did go on Ravelry and you can pull up the yarn and then you can pull up people who have that yarn and then those people who are good enough and smart enough to catalog their yarn I don't know if Jackie's over here or over here, but you're one of those people. And so people can list, like, I have it in stash and I'm not selling it, or I have it in stash and I'm willing to trade, barter, whatever. I found one woman who had one skein for sale out of like four pages. I also contact the people who, sorry, that don't have it for sale when I'm really. I was going to do that, but I, the one woman that I did find um, who had the one skein, I messaged her and she was sweet as can be, but of course she was in Australia. Yeah. And I was like, I can't, I just don't want to wait. So yeah. And I should be happy to sell you the one skein if somebody's out there. Well, and again, it's not the people who have like, it's like they've already knit it and they probably have this little leftover and that's all I needed. So let me ask if you have. Yeah, there are definitely people who have a lot of stash of this yarn. So, um, you know, but anyway, um, what I can say is that I'm in love with this pattern. Um, I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, the, I did use the Ravelry form. So there, here's a lot of news, new things for me. And I wonder if you want to talk about that when Karen gets on all the- oh, Sure, we can do that, yeah. yeah are both probably eager to talk about your yeah life. yeah so the, the what i will say because we don't need to talk about with this karen is that there is there's charting on it um and jackie and i've talked about this before she's a visual person she can look at that chart and somehow i keep asking her like how does your brain work how, how did i've actually taken pretty much row by row and transcribed it into k p k1 p1 because for me, as soon as I do them, I do the repeats, like it's in my brain. Yeah. So, and then what I realized too, is that this repeats, right? So once I did it once, I had it already had it written for the next time. So that, so there's been some things that I'm like, oh, look at me. So I'm feel, I'm really proud of it. And I'm really excited to be. It reminds me of yoga like how you start to learn things is yeah. in your practice yeah you can't rush it you can't be an experienced yogi like that you have no. oh my gosh by the way did he the last time we had a podcast you weren't here but heather was on all oh, right yeah, yeah. And that I'm was sure heather's tuning in now to our yoga <laughs> <laughs> no but that was so fun to have her and we hope so lovely enjoyed yeah. that and i've been i still practice with her on monday nights she has her her class that you can take maybe i'll put it in the show notes again it's ten dollars yeah i know i definitely want to do that with you too she's so lovely um and I she just, was she was talking about the thing that the, the big takeaway for me is what do i need right now mm -hmm. what do i need like and i've been thinking about that ever since and like i loved how she was like what kind of touch do i need mm -hmm. You know, even just doing this right now feels so good. Try it. Like, that is good. Yeah, it does. Like, Everybody so at home. Here. Okay. I feel like I cut you off, but go, go back to your knitting and your learning. Oh, well, the only other thing I'll mention, too, is I've got my beautiful little, um, um, what do you call that? placeholder yeah thank you is that what it called placeholder or progress keepers um from uh bed of roses who catherine we love you and everything that you do and we talk about you on every podcast but i i just really enjoy just putting a bunch of her little charms together and having it sit there on my work and it's just yeah. I, that's the kind of thing that we talk about this like our knitting jewelry it just makes us happy because that one doesn't look like it's giving you any information is it just sitting there um, it was originally right side, wrong side, I, and which originally I needed, but now, now it's just making me happy when I see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's not giving me any information other than love and mm -hmm. aesthetic. Um, fading? No, not at all. I'm about to talk about, I'm wondering if I should talk about, if, if you've said everything you want to say about it. For now, yes. 
I'll reserve some. I mean, I feel like in the process, you ended up like ripping back once. Oh. It wasn't like the end of the world for you, you in a way that it might have been before. No, I, I th but the other part of it too is um, there is something to be said for rustic yarn and how um, easy it is to sort of rip things out and not feel like you're losing yourself with it. Um, like it, the, the stitches stay there and they don't unravel. So there is that benefit. But yes, I, I ripped back probably three or four times just to make sure. Um, and I, I constantly push myself like, am I really going to be happy with this if I don't rip it back? I'm going to press pause for a second and put my fail on for everybody to see. Because okay. I think failing is so important. And, and my sister in particular was like, you have to show this fail, so I'm going to show it. Okay, so you're pausing all of them. Just so you don't all have to see my bra. Okay. Hi. Hi, you're back. It's Wait. my asymmetrical. I know. It's like you're going to start a new trend. Okay. So this is the um, Poison Girl Knits Judy Lodge sweater. You know, you're used to seeing it with like a holly and it's a very fitted little sweater and then it had a yoke. Oh, and it's in time out. <laughs> So in my, in my thinking, I ordered the body, the base yarn, the solid black yarn from Black Mountain Yarn, thinking they'll be on. How perfectly amazing will that be to wear a sweater from Donna on the podcast? Then the yarn arrived and it was too bulky for the pattern. So I had to like think about it. Yeah. <clears throat> but and I had to like fudge this part over here but I always wanted to have a um, mohair yoke mm -hmm. and not a v-neck but just a solid across and then it has these adorable pup sleeves but Caitlin and I have included that this just looks like I have hairy arms like well, well, yeah will you put, put your arm closer to the camera yeah, I feel like you're, um, what do they call, what, are those men with really bears? <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those. So, and the way that my hair, so it would work, it will get this, it would get this really, you know, see how it's um, solid then again? Yeah, yeah. It would get this pretty solid thing going on. Mm -hmm. But it needed to be actual yarn that's 18 mm -hmm. stitches 18 stitches to four inches, which this mm -hmm. is, this is so solid and so dense to get on gauge. <clears throat> and then the sleeves need to be solid too. We've I was going to say, I, I absolutely love it. I like when you sit back and your arm looks solid yeah. colored, it's so cute because I love how straight across, it's like wearing a little black dress. I had a little black dress that was like that, that had that it's yeah. so flattering on you, but yes, I mean, maybe but I feel like I have to do the whole thing over again. Unfortunately, it was fine. It would be an easy modification and it was just so devastating for me because I was so excited to have, it was going to be sort of a sexy Valentine thing and it just didn't work out and it was so unfun to knit these. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and to knit the, I don't know, like I'll tell you because the, I don't even, I think it worked out fine. Like a single strand of yarn on size seven up here for the silk mohair gave it a nice translucent look. Mm -hmm. But I had to go down several needle sizes with my very bulky yarn to get gauged down here. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have just been much easier to have one needle size consistently through. Yeah. So I made a yarn that I could actually do on sevens throughout. Sure. So I just need some space from this to find some basic black yarn that's soft enough to pair with silk mohair. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't even talk about what yarn you're using. It's Wolfo Tove, 
I think mm -hmm. is what it was. And it said it was worsted, which yeah. to me means 18, but that must not be what it means. It must mean that it's more like, it ended up coming in, I think it, when I read the tag, it was like 14, 16, which to me yeah. is bulky. What do I know? You know, I didn't look at the actual number gauge. Right. But well, is it really showing off as like ugly as it is in real life? No, I mean, it's just <laughs> funny when we, because you tried it on and I was trying to be really positive in my head. I'm like, you look like a hairy, hairy person. Yeah. So anyway. I mean, which, oh, of course, you could pull that off and be fabulous, but it seemed a little too Chewbacca-like for you. And it was so hard because I literally had to re-knit this area once and this was so hard to pick up. And I just going to say for my knitting life, it's hard to let go and not like power through. And like literally there was so much, there were so many beautiful patterns happening. And I was like, but I got to work on this. And then I didn't want to work on it, you know? And so it was becoming a obstacle because I tend to not be willing to knit multiple things, multiple like sweaters at once. I just yeah. like one sweater at a time. So um, to pass through the disappointment of this was interesting for me because it was also going to be last year. I just have all these like stories I tell about things and I did the morning sweater for when you were leaving Mm -hmm. Wisconsin and then I have something else in my life that I'm mourning right now and this was going to be like the beautiful like <laughs> I'm leaving that and it still and it did not turn out so I was I was disgruntled to say the are you breaking up with me <laughs> <laughs> is this your I'm breaking up with Caitlin sweater. I know when I do break up with you I'll knit a sweater to go with it can you do matching ones so at least I can go off into? Yes, yes. Like, so, like you know, something like half a sweater. Like you have a sweater that you've abandoned too. That that one that was like so beautiful for Tennessee. That um, Andrew Mallory one. Fifty. Yes. Um, you know what's humorous to me about that um, is that it's the one sweater that James keeps talking. About. <laughs> He's like, when are you gonna knit that? Because he likes color. And, and I'm like, honey, you need to move on from the sweater. Um, but I, I'm trying to figure out what to do about that yarn. Yeah. Probably, um, I probably need to, whatever, figure something out. Yeah. Well, and I'm just very curious if I'll actually go back and I, I think you just have to wait for the right time to go back and do something again. Oh, you, you have to be in the right mindset. Like I could tell the whole time you were doing this, I'm, I, you know, you are very um, driven when it comes to your knitting and you have this whole, like you said, this whole story, you're like narrate narrative going about your knitting where I'm just like, dip, 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 dip. Um, and I was like, why are you doing this? Like, it's making you miserable. I just have to do, it. I'm like, it, I could tell this was not good. I'm like, just go pick out something colorful and knit it. And, 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 yeah. And black in like this time of year. February in Wisconsin. But I did it last time and it worked out really well. The Frida, uh, the morning sweater. I yeah. Like. But that's because you could like knit it and touch yourself as you were going. Like, you know, yeah. It was touch so, I think it would be a great idea sometime to do the is it called the Judy Lodge sweater? Yeah. This like silk mohair yoke and, but solid arms and solid body. And well, so the, what I was wondering is what if you did double strand of mohair for the sleeve? That's just so painful. I mean, I guess it's just, yeah, maybe I could. I'd just be curious if that would give enough density to it. Um, or, really? or, what about if it was a single strand of, of fingering weight yarn, black yarn with the mohair? I guess, cause like not to have to re, like, I, cause I really, if I give it enough time, maybe I can take the sleeves off. I think the idea of maybe double stranding the silk mohair might be the best right. because it's like, maybe would play but on the other hand like what it, it has this you cannot see it at all a really cute 
Yeah. 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 A little puff sleeve. And I feel like that would show up better in the solid. But on the other hand, what you're saying, which I maybe agree with, is that picking up mohair on mohair might be less brutal than picking up like a 18 stitches every four inch yarn on mohair. I don't know how that, like yeah. how this transition is just straight across, so it's no big yeah. deal, but this might be a little bit hard. I don't yeah. know. Well, it's, it, it has potential to be absolutely yeah. fabulous. And I guess I, you know, like I could literally finish the neckline too and see what I think of it. Cause it has this cute, Oh yeah, keyhole. It's adorable. I know it's really, really cute. But I just, I need a break from it. Yeah, I would say you should look at that in November. Getting ready for party season because we're gonna be like, yeah, holiday party season, COVID free by then, right? Exactly. Yes. All right. Um, can I hit pause again so I can like put a some clothes on? <laughs> Yes, please. No, I, I think we'd all like to see you. Yes, please pause. <laughs> this, the bra I'm wearing is the airplane bra. And it's the bra that you can wear for like three days solid and never take it off. It's so comfortable. But nice. yeah, it's not attractive. Otherwise, I'd be like showing everybody. Right. I was just waiting for your face. It didn't really do much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Hold on. Okay, look at that. Caitlin has a has reversed her sweater. I, the magic of pausing. <laughs> and she had the experience of the um, the video freezing on my cleavage. Yes, yeah, Jackie was changing, which is always good. This was what I saw. Uh, I feel like I had something to share, and now I've blanked on it. I have something to share that's related to you. Okay. So, you know your mittens? My mittens? Yes, I know my mittens. So, this is Caitlin's mitten combo, which is Durham Naturum Jeanne, only I got it in Gilead, which is worsted weight. And then this is lichen and lace um, marshmallow hair in umber. How were those mittens? Amber. Received? Amber, sorry. How were those mittens received? Oh, Amy was so happy about them. Um, yeah, she just loved them. So I, 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 I still am, uh, I mean, I was so happy to get those, but I really miss them. Yeah. Well, I've had a lot of viewers, it's so sweet. I've had a lot of viewers send me links to um, sweater patterns with that similar kind of motif. So thank you, everybody. Um, I definitely think I want to do. Oh, you've already started. Okay. This is a swatch on 11s. It's supposed to be so you'd run two skeins. I wish, I wish you could see how beautiful this is. But you, it's, I mean, it's showing up for me. It looks beautiful. Okay. So that is on 11s. It's supposed to be on 10.75s. I haven't. You haven't said what you're I know, swatching. I'm doing. Oh. Oh. Okay. oh, the magnolia sweater. Pull I waited forever for the, the motif to be up here. I never wanted to make a motif down there. So this you're is right. um, by Camilla Vad. Yeah, it's not really showing up well with your black and white. Let me see if I can. Um, well, her, it's sweater. It's in gray. Yeah, I know. I'm just okay. Well, anyways, that's what I'm. That's what I thought I would pick up to please myself. <laughs> but I had to order more. I like how you said that. Well, I had to order mo more mohair though because. I was, um. Let's see if there's a. It it, it calls for being knit on two, ten point seven five, which is a very mysterious needle size. That and, is weird. I the gauge that, for me is that a European is, size. I don't know. I mean, the gauge isn't just spot on at this point, but it's such yeah. a big sweater that I figure <clears throat> I, the sweater that I wore. I'm just showing the motif. Uh -huh. the, the sweater I wore when Heather was on is an airy sweater too. Yeah. 
And and I figured this will just be airy, you know. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so beautiful. Yeah. And so and it'll be knit on elevens. So my goal is to have that knit, you know, when I go to New York, I'll be able to wear that and nothing else because it'll be like 45 degrees. And when are you going to New York? I'm going to New York for spring break to see Debbie Gore hmm. sit in her apartment and knit and FaceTime Caitlin. While Caitlin cries. <laughs> yes. Debbie is Debbie's over 65 and has been vaccinated. And I am a teacher, and so I will get my first vaccine on Tuesday. Which... So happy for you and so jealous. Yeah. Yeah. People get your vaccine so we can have Ryan back. Yeah. Yeah. So that's speaking of Ryan back. Oh, the half. You yeah, you have you have something new to yeah, share. Okay. Well, I have a poem I want to share then. Okay. Um, so I was wondering, why don't you talk about your whip while I find it? Because I don't have it handy. Oh, okay. So I I think I talked about this before that my Christmas present to my daughter Isabella was to knit her a sweater. She never wants me to knit anything because she's super sensitive and doesn't care for wool. So I found loopy mango cotton in um this green color one oh. which i think is called sorry i'm looking for the Have you shown it on the podcast yet i thought i had mm. oh avocado um this yarn it's 100 percent cotton it's um divine it is so unbelievably silky soft um, so she had very specific parameters of what she wanted me to knit. So we landed and I started at something and it didn't work. What did I, what was I knitting before? I knit some sweater and it didn't work out. So I am doing the power puff, um, oh, so by park and knit. Um, I'm probably not doing the contrast and she doesn't want it to be cropped. So she wants it to be longer. You know, I'm trying to get my kid to be hip and happening and she just wants like a house coat. Oh, that's <laughs> I, don't think, I know it's funny. I don't think she wants the puff sleeve, but anyway, it was more about the silhouette of like the simple neckline. And so, um, so far this is where I'm at. Um, so it's about hip length. Um, and I need to pick up for the sleeves. So um, it's quite heavy and drapey, which I think will be good because she wanted it longer. And um, I will say that the yardage for the Loopy Mango is not excessive. So it has taken quite a bit of skein. So I'll have to do another order. I think this will be my third time ordering yarn for this. Um, and again, how many patterns? Did you go through? I, I mean, I knit, it's so funny how you can be completely like forget what you did. I only knit one other pattern, but I got pretty far and it just wasn't, I think it was actually the Loopy Mango. It was a cardigan and Loopy Mango, but she just, she wanted it to be more dense and didn't want to see the fab like through the fabric. So we'll see how it turns out, but I absolutely can't say enough about the yarn. I love everything Loopy Mango produces. Um, it's divine. We are in the works with Loopy Mango. Probably our next podcast will have information about that in our fringe along. Mm -hmm. and just a preview. We're very excited. I have my Loopy Mango. Can I show it? Of course. But Caitlin's mom is going to join us. Yes, Cynthia's <laughs> going to join us for the fringe along. <laughs> and she is fantastic and an artist and lives in Santa. I mean, you should talk about her. Yeah. But. So my mom lives in Santa Fe. Um, she's unbelievably creative. She has her own um, photographic blog called Chasing Santa Fe. Um, she does incredible portrait work and it's just just because she's passionate about it. She doesn't do it as a business. Um, but she um, and her design style, I'm hoping that we can show her apartment because she, she just has, yeah. she's, has incredible um, she's very eclectic, incredible taste. And I thought it would be fabulous to have her on. And she, oh, and she also makes these incredible couture dolls. So like, how do you list it all? But anyway, I, we thought it'd be fun for her to wear the French jacket and, um, and introduce you to her. So Absolutely. now that we're doing Zoom, it makes it so much easier yes. than 
And I have my fringe along <laughs> color picked out, which is the nice. camel. And, I, and in, in, you know, it's in plastic, so sorry. But I figured I would speckle it with white and it could look kind of like a Palomino sort of Western-esque, wear it with cowboy boots and jeans. Yeah, love That's it. That's the vibe I was going for. Um, it's, so we're looking forward to that and we will tell you more about that next time. Okay, so this is, this is a Yates, a little Yates for you. Oh. And again, it's like, it's that whole first theme of like mystery, beauty, finding, I, I don't know, you know, that I just personally need those inputs. And I think we all do as knitters. So flowers, yarn, and poetry. So this is um, the song of Wandering Angus, and it's by Yeats. And I want to say just a big thank you to the people. I don't know if we said it yet or not, but we had a poetry advent and then people came on and joined us and read their poems and like they read them in Portuguese, they read them in Spanish. It was just such a joy. It was lovely. And it was such a, it's so exciting to hear poems. So, and I think you're getting more and more used to it, Caitlin. I am. I, I mean, I don't even have like the resting poetry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here, poems are poems. Like this. here we go. So this one I adore and I named my shawl after it. That's why it's, uh, that's why I'm reading it right now that we're about to talk to, talk about. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread. And when white moths were on the wing and moth-like stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in a stream and caught a little silver trout. When I laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire aflame, but something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair, who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. Though I'm old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and take her hands and walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time and times are done the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun. <laughs> nice. Yes. Um, so the shawl, our Rhinebeck shawl and pal, it is the half wrap shawl. And here's a finished one right here. They are bicolored. They are, you know, the most sensuous pieces of fabric and just, um, just they're basically in there from, it's a free pattern from Pearl Soho. Look, I even have a giant um, <laughs> snag. Yeah, I have a snag. Oh. Whatever, it's fine. Um, it's in their linen. You need to do a wool. video of how to fix that. <laughs> it's it's wool, alpaca, and linen. And so there's all these like linen, you can see it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to say it this time around. We think of them as little pubic hairs. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't care because the body is gross and beautiful. And it just is. So get over yourselves. So your shawl has pubic hair. <laughs> I only <laughs> okay fine I shouldn't have said that <laughs> um, sorry people I, I was like you're not going there I did I went there I don't care um it's so I yeah I could fix it later so these I mean look at we we keep showing them over and over so well go ahead oh I was just gonna say I, what I love is that we, you know, we have the hashtag going the half wrap cow and it's just been so enjoyable to see people go down this rabbit hole. And there are some people who have knit, there's someone recently commented that they're on their third. It is such a cathartic knit. It doesn't have to be in linen quill. It could be any yarn and oh, that looks so fabulous. So this is what happens once you knit one color, you start doing short rows um, and 
in the second half, your rows get longer and longer. In the first half, they start long and they get shorter and shorter. But I think psychologically, that's very good. Yes. Because um, you get the momentum of getting to the halfway. And then once you're halfway, you get a new color, which helps you feel. Yeah. And so these colors are butterscotch and pale mushroom, I believe. Yeah. And so this is the silver apples of the moon and golden apples of the sun. I wish I was with you this week when I had made my butterscotch pudding because it would have looked really good <laughs> with your shawl. Kitchen, can we put that in the show notes? Yes, Smitten Kitchen. I talked about it last time. Oh my gosh, I have gone, I have knit, knit. I've made so many of her recipes that... Yeah, that's so fabulous. I want to knit something with that mushroom. This drape is, and I was so, I'm going to swear, I was so pissed off at the black sweater. And, and so this is what I've been knitting on and it's been so soothing. And it, it's just, I think other people knit socks in that way, like something easy that just yeah. receives you. And that is my COVID project that eases me and soothes me. Yeah, no, I... I'm, I'm really wishing I had that, but actually I've been so consumed with my other, this knit that, yeah. Um, we had, well, I'll have to show them later because we had some gifts, which I don't have handy. And I wanted to show one more thing. Should I show it now? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I was so just gonna on. say that um, my Clinton Hill cashmere Winston sweater Winslow sweater. Winslow. Winslow, which has like, I had this on today too. It has like these fabulous deep vents and just really just big luxurious sleeves. And it's obviously so soft and amazing. Yeah. Um, anyways, I knit the sleeves to pattern and I found that they were too long. Like my whole hand was covered. And I, so I re, I cut the sleeves and it was no big deal. I cut the sleeves. I ripped out the amount I wanted and Kitchenered them shorter, but it was a big deal in that I had to sit and worry about it and fuss and not do it for a long time. But then <laughs> once I actually did it, it was like, I was like, have you even worn this sweater? Winter is almost over. Yeah, no, I have, I've worn it. I love it. It is so sensual and amazing. And, but the, it's not a good podcast sweater. It is, I, I it's such an oversized sweater yeah. and camel and just camel by itself doesn't look like fabulous on me, but it yeah. looks good. It looks so good in the world. Yeah. You know, with your denim, with your white cords, yeah. with your heels, with your nails, with moving. But just sitting, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. it needs to move to be presented to you. So someday maybe I'll, you know, wear it out in the world and take some like out in the world photos. What a concept. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. But yeah. that felt good to get that done. And um, yeah, and I have been able to wear it. So <laughs> we are, I think we just, <laughs> come to the end of like the piles oh we have okay um yeah i don't really i mean we've got donna and um karen coming on so uh, so you're done with what you need to share yeah and in the meantime i will find the gift that we have for you we have some things we'll, we'll probably give it away on instagram um a friend that we met through poetry sent us oh, right. to share with all of you but i i want okay. to show it and I thought I brought it. And I didn't. I'm in my mother's room because I can. There's a door with light, so I'm trying yeah. to get some light on our faces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll see you again, but we'll see you. We'll have four little boxes. Right. So. But okay. thank you again for joining us. I mean, Caitlin, can you say about Patreon what you were telling me this morning, which was so amazing? Oh well, I just thank you to those people that have just joined our Patreon. Um, account recently. We've had um, some really lovely new additions and so we're appreciative of that. We've had some people that changed their pledge and upped their pledges and that just, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we did have um, a small Patreon event 
where recently where we shared um, sort of our knitting plans for the year. And we do hope to and plan to do some other um, Patreon specific events and we'll let everybody know. Um, if you're interested in, in joining our Patreon account, you know, you can do it as little as a dollar a month. Um, it will, as again, I know we've talked about this, it, it will be the funds that we use to bring content to you and for Jackie and I to travel to see one another. And she's getting vaccine, I hope too soon. So, um, but anyway, so thank you to our patrons. It's just, it, every time we get a little notification, it just makes us feel so good. And we really appreciate you. And we appreciate all our viewers, whether you're a Patreon supporter or not, we know that everybody has different comfort levels. So it's, it's for us, I think it's kind of like this bridge into the mystery, the unknown, the future too. It's like this mm -hmm. affirmation of what we're doing. Yeah. And I know it's strange that it's money, but it, like that energy is a way that people communicate um like and so we have this like little place where we can dream mm -hmm. have knitting dreams of, yeah. of of bringing bringing more to you yeah. and that and so we really appreciate it. I, it's like has had such value to have that yeah for sure because i think it would this will, this has been, I mean, granted, we haven't been able to travel to see one another, but um, it's, it's just, I feel like it's just sitting there whispering to us like soon, soon, soon. And, um, and we have our Patreon supporters to thank for that. So yeah, well, so we thank yeah. you so much. And, we, and any of you who have just hang out and watch and comment and like the episodes, yeah. um, again, it's not, I, I think we're not in the business of like trying to figure out what you want, because I feel like that's a little backwards. It's like, instead we try to keep figuring out, keep trying to grow ourselves and bring yeah. you that growth and hope that like, that there's this reciprocal relationship. So when you say yes to our risk taking or whatever, it, it helps us risk a little more and bring a little more because I, I think the thing about our podcast that I love about it personally is it's knitting's what is it's grounded in, but that knitting just allows us to connect with you in ways we wouldn't have access to you otherwise. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So like yeah. what's coming next? That's all like that's what's coming next is the magic part. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> but like, like, oh, and by the way, just oh, to, yeah, she's got some new ones now that are all like same same artist, but mm -hmm. they're green leaves and just like that, like um, copper green. that is yeah. filigree. I don't know. I don't know the right. What is it called when copper turns? Bare degree. Bare degree. Bare degree leaves in the same shape. So those are Pittsburgh Mercantile. Yes, oh, yeah. I didn't say it. Susie Corb. Susie Corb, who, by the way, I was messaging back and forth with her recently, and she, Debbie's teaching her to knit. Yes. You know that? So that's exciting. So I can only imagine what, what we're going to see be seeing from the Corb sisters. Um, um, but yeah, anyway, and then I'm wearing a tried, tried and true favorite. Uh, Melissa Jenkins. Yes. yes. I, who Melissa has been knitting up a storm. I see that her sort of knitting creative like juices are flowing. She's been doing all this marling. And um, so if you don't follow on her on Instagram, you should. She, mm -hmm. she's got some and she did start a half. She yeah. started. But, but she's done some fun um, marling colors, which is cool. So. And I'm wearing lipstick brought to you by Mara Lisa from Girl Meets You. Oh. Also, I just think it's fun. I love yeah. the way people influence each other. I love that. I know. I do too. I, I found my, when I was putting the sweater on, I was like, oh, I have lipstick to match, which is called ultraviolet. I'm trying to see what, you can see my ultraviolet lips. I'm trying to see what brand it is. No idea. Can't read it. Bellevue. Anybody knows what that is? Anyway. All right. Well, we'll be back. My glasses. We'll be back will be a foursome when we come back. Four. Okay. All right. Bye for now. Breakfast time, Caitlin. Okay. Okay. Bye. Sure. Are, you, are you ready, Caitlin? It's part two. I'm ready for two.
Part two. I mean, we need one of those little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we're this is part two in case you fast forward because you didn't want to hear part one of our like droning on. But we have two guests that we um, are just so thrilled to have part of our uh, a part of this episode. So we have Donna from Black Martin Yarn Shop, and we have her knitting bestie Karen. And we met. I don't know, met the two of you on a recent um, Zoom. It was our, I think it was our bingo, right? Yeah. Yes. And, um, and so it came to light that, how, you know, the, the two of you, you know, to have just hit it off. So we just wanted to welcome you. We're all about sort of sharing the love and sharing the community of friendship and knitting. And we just thought it would be perfect way to segue into that. So, hi. Hi. Thanks hi. for having us. Know Thanks for so being willing. Sure. I think when Jackie first approached you, I'm sure Donna had a heart attack and was like, no, but you, you <laughs> seem to either like type very quickly, yes, before yeah. you <laughs> Well, we love you guys and you're so inspiring to us and we're just so happy to be here and so feel so honored that you invited us to be here. Oh, well, oh, that's cool. sweet. It's very sweet. The, feeling is, the, the feeling's mutual. And, and yeah. your friendship just lifted off the screen for us at Bingo. Because yeah. Karen, you're, you're coming to us from Portland? Portland, Oregon. And yes. Donna, where is your shop for people who don't know? I am in Black Mountain, North Carolina. So only about an hour and a half from Caitlin. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, just I can't wait for that. I just need that COVID shot. I just need the shot. Me uh, too. I, I think what I'm going to do is after the second dose, I'm just going to figure out how to navigate right to your shop. I'll <laughs> help you. <laughs> so, so tell us about, I mean, the question that I just was dying to start with was how did you two become friends? So a really good knitting friend of mine in Portland has known about uh, Donna's shop for a really long time. And I was sort of in this sort of limited world. I really didn't, I wasn't on Instagram and I didn't really know a lot about knitting or different yarns. I was just sort of knitting hats and shawls. And I had knit um, a couple sweaters, you know, a hohi and a, and a Andrea Mowry. But she said, you should really check out Black Mountain and, you know, Donna is just amazing because she has gone online and she's just killing it. So <laughs> I go online and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like yarn after yarn and a yarn. Okay, so it is, it is about the yarn, but it's about <laughs> Donna because Aww. I started to stalk her, I felt like. <laughs> stalk her I, I would just be, because I'm very much about, um, you know, there's all it's a small shop and we have all these indie dyers and all these designers. And I just want to be really respectful of their time. So I'd be like, well, only if you have a moment, I would love to chat and, you know, just like, only if you have a second, you know, cause I don't want to be one of those horrible, you know, customers that are like, Oh, it's her again. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I'd be like, um, do you think you have a second to talk about this? And well, well, Karen is so, so like, Texted her. No, I texted her at the and beginning. And she's so sweet because fast forward to now that we have, and we'll we'll go back if you want to talk about how we became such good friends. But if Karen has, if we set up a time, let's say one o'clock, and I'm busy at the shop, I can just text Karen and go, "I'm super busy. Can we do it at 3? And she's always so accommodating to me. Of course. <laughs> she says she never gets upset with me or anything. Oh no! I mean, I just like. I, that's again that's just an, on a customer level that's the way I want to be like I just want to be flexible because I've worked retail myself and I if you have a rush you have people in your shop or you're you know you want to do that you want to be able to respond to that and I'm always like yeah whatever it's fine you know well, I also I want to give it. you or, or any customer that we do the virtual um, shopping with I want to give the, you or them my undivided attention so most of the time I can plan it and schedule it Sometimes we can't, but we do our best. Okay, I'm listening, and then in the back of my mind, I'm like, I want to be Donna's virtual friend too. Yeah, <laughs> you can. And I'm like, I've never, I've never done virtual shopping. I don't That's know about amazing. Them. 
Like, I think it, we'll have Donna's cell phone number in the show notes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so did your friendship, did it start at, during COVID or before? Yeah, so it started in about um, June. That's when I first started oh. stalking oh. her. <laughs> and then toward the end of the summer, we just kept having these lovely little chats. And, and uh, Donna said, why don't we do a happy hour? Aww. So we did a happy hour. And then by the end of it, we were both in tears oh, because we have, we just found out how much we have in common. And we have these daddies that have both passed away that we just adored, that were just true, gentle, loving, kind, mm-hmm. supportive men, dads in our lives. And that was sort of like, that's what there was that moment and literally we were both in tears just remembering that our dads had passed away and how much we just they were wonderful men I mean just not only to us but in their own communities Donna's and my dad I mean we just were like well no wonder you know we just Mm -hmm. have been raised sort of similarly and Mm -hmm. so we'll periodically talk about our dads but not often because we'll start crying (laughs) cry Did they I'm crying both, aloud in this episode? Okay, <laughs> I know, but I have to ask: Did they both pass recently? Is that what I'm, or just? No, no my dad passed away. It's been eight years now. Mm-hmm. Well, and mine passed away seven, almost okay. eight. So I think we had the loss at the same time, even though we didn't know each other. It was just, you know, I think once you lose a parent, you you know, your life is so different and Mm -hmm. you can't really relate until it happens. I mean, you can try. And I just, another friend of mine just lost a a father and she just knows that I get it. And our fathers were really good friends for 40 years. So you just, it's just this life experience that you have Mm -hmm. and you just know kind of what to say and when not to say something, how to be present Mm -hmm. and, and just, being together and just sharing that love of our dads and just everything knitting and just the way we treat people. I find that we're very similar and just, we just want to bring light, love and joy into people's lives in a way that during COVID you can, when it's so limited, like what can you do in your life? And Donna just exudes that. I mean, she's <laughs> just, I mean, she's just like my hero. I just no. love her to pieces. She just is, such a shining example of bringing attention to other people, not herself, being so supportive. And I really feel like she genuinely cares about me as a customer, not selling yarn. Like what would Karen really like, you know, and really works with me in that respect. And sometimes I have to say, but Karen, you already have that. (laughs) <laughs> she's like yes but I want this for another project <laughs> you have that color. She, knows, she knows my um I have a second Donna yarn shop that's in Portland Oregon and oh, um, that's how much Donna yarn I have <laughs> <laughs> but, well no what she in that yeah, what you've said. I mean, right, Caitlin, you're like, oh, the yarn, the beautiful yes. stash. I'm sorry, Jackie. No, it's totally okay. I was just, um, we call it here being in the club, what you're talking about with our, with parents. And and you don't know this, but both Caitlin and I lost our fathers too. And, I'm sorry. Oh, not recently, you know, but but they were young men and, you know, and... Mm. And, and I think it's interesting because it does like shift your whole way of approaching life. You recognize that it's temporary. You recognize what the, what's valuable and what is, what's fleeting. And so, mm-hmm. and I would right. say, well, well, I was just going to say that I wanted to mirror what Karen said, because Donna, as much as we know about Black Mountain Yarn Shop, just kind of just through being knitters, you just hear about it here, there and everywhere. It's it's interesting to say too that like it's not about your face plastered on a billboard or your personality and I think a lot of models of like how to be a success in the knitting world is to showcase yourself and represent yourself and could you just I mean I know it's going to be awkward (laughs) perhaps but like that seems like a really beautiful but slightly different approach is that some an intentional thing on your part? I'm not sure, Jackie. Ask me the question in a different way. I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. 
you, um, the, what Karen said about how you, your business model is to make sure that your customers are happy and that you're highlighting independent yarn dyers and pattern makers, and you don't seem to have to have yourself in the story all the time. Not that that's okay. bad, but like, I will say I'm the opposite and not that that's bad. It's all about me and what I'm doing. <laughs> Welcome to her podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, it'd be easy to see that that would be my version of being a knitter. Well, I like to showcase other people. I don't like, like I am, and Caitlin, I kind of, when I first started doing lives, and I had a little bit of conversation with Kate, and I'm like, give me some pointers, critique. And she said, just be yourself. Because I feel like I am so good behind the camera. I can take pictures of people all day long and put their pictures out there and show off what they've done. But boy, when I have to get in front of the camera, it's a totally different, it's just, I don't want it to be about me. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of our customers and their accomplishments, whether they're big or small. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when we first opened our shop, we had a lot of the commercial brands, but we have certainly migrated to having more indie dyers. And we have gotten to know a lot of the designers. A lot of them have come to our shop. And I just feel like my, one of my jobs, I don't really mean it's a job, but I want to showcase other people. I don't necessarily feel like I need to be showcased. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, the other part of it too that when we had that little conversation is what uh, I think Karen hit on too is like we're we're all about the connections with people and the more you sort of are able to put yourself out there, then we feel drawn to like, oh, well, you're my new knitting best friend. <laughs> you know, I think that that's the whole Instagram thing and like in being on YouTube and all of that. It's like we're just people talking about knitting, you know? And then, you know, if we go out in the world where there's knitters and they're like, oh my God, it's Caddy Jacks. We're just like, we're just two people. But I think it's that, that need to be connected with other people. So the more authentic you are, it just makes it so like, oh, I can picture myself sitting, you know, right next to you and chatting you up, you know? And I think that that's what we want. You know, we don't need the bells and whistles and we want to yeah, know right. who you are and what drives your business because, you know, I think we all secretly want to own a yarn shop, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, since I started doing the lives, which I'm getting more comfortable with, I've had so much great feedback. People have sent me direct messages and they're so sweet. They're like, I love when you go live. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know why, but thank you. So <laughs> it makes me feel really good. So yeah. now when I do it I, and I see familiar faces or, you know, names, it, it makes me feel more comfortable doing it. And sometimes I don't know what to say, but people, I think they're just okay with that. You know, if I'm yeah. like, Showing you the Carolina blue skies, or so. Yes, no, you do such. I you do such an amazing job, and Thank you. you just. I mean, and on top of just what she brings into the shop, and try, and also the work. You know, like she has the big names, and of course, and and these per, she has personal relationships. She's not really going to talk about that, but she really <laughs> does. I mean, she has like it is a this is the reason she's successful is that she really has been with like um adela with lola bean or whoever and you know stephen west has come and stayed at her house he and, stays in that room right there <laughs> <laughs> may i share the super st cute story about him she, she you know this is pre-covid and he, she said hey we have all these great you know they're in a little resort so we have, we have all these great restaurants and everything he's like can we just have pizza and sit around and knit because I, mean, <laughs> I thought you know he'd like, want to go to Asheville side of him you know and he was and so just, cute yeah, yeah. I, I'm like you want to go to Asheville tonight do you want to go out and he's like can we just get pizza and stay home and knit and I'm like of course we can he said can we go, go get pizza by the yarn shop I said of course and he goes can we go to the yarn shop and get some yarn and we had been there all day but I guess his wheels were spinning about Oh, I want to design something new, and I saw this yarn, so he's mm -hmm. wonderful. I, I, all of our designers, and like you say, we're all people, they are all so kind and 
generous. And during COVID, so many of them gave so much of themselves and it helped. And I don't know that they realized how much it helped the yarn shops to stay afloat by designing these beautiful patterns. And then we have our indie dyers who have the beautiful yarns to go with the patterns. And it has just meant so much to us because what they do is a lot of work, mm -hmm. whether they're designing, whether they're dying, it, they make it look easy, but I'm sure it's not as easy. I've never designed anything, but I'm sure it's not near as easy as we are all, you know, I pick up a pattern. I just start knitting it. Perfect. You know, I don't have to think twice about it, but there's so much, and I've done some test knitting for people and there's a lot, you know, you find a mistake, you have to let the designer know so that when they put it out to the public, the, the, the people that are buying their patterns aren't finding the mistakes. So they, they really work hard. The designers, the dyers, they're just amazing. Mm -hmm. Have you had to make, um, it's, it's like a feminine, cooperative sort of business mindset where you assume, like I would say maybe in, which I feel like Caitlin and I, even though we're not a business, in a way, we try to have that too. We try to feel like we'll get more from giving something away than from being like, what's in it for me? Like that is such a, it's, it's human. It's okay. But I, I love, I love the abundance in the knitting community too. And the whole like discovering the goodness out there. Mm -hmm. um, have you made decisions along those lines where like maybe a traditional accountant would say, that's not a good idea, but you were like, no, I feel in my gut, I want to do this. Oh yeah. And even not even our traditional accountant, but my husband who pays the bills, <laughs> the guy that works at the yarn shop, <laughs> sometimes he'll say, now you really sure that we should do this. And I would say 99% of the time it was a good thing to do. So we love to give back. And, you know, we, we do a lot of sales, you know, 20% off or, you know, my birthday was on the 13th, so 13% off, you know, so oh. just, the, and people love that. So, um, yeah. but I, I love feel, your little pop-up. She has like little pop-up sales. She's like, I just decided to put stuff on sale. <laughs> it's the holiday. Oh. I mean, she's just, you're so generous and oh, kind. You're so sweet. Thank you. And just, <laughs> I just really, I, I really admire um, Donna's perspective. And I think this is what you were highlighting on is that there really is abundance, not scarcity. And she really, that's her mindset. And she's very purposeful in that and believes in that, that there really is enough. And um, she just lives her life that way. And you can just see it in the way she is and the way she conducts herself. So, I mean, we, I mean those we just, people I want to be friends with, right? Like that, <laughs> you know, and then to have knitting in common, right? And to be able to talk about that, but at the core, just to think that I would meet someone so special during COVID when you're just not meeting people, it's been yeah. such a blessing and a joy and just like really made a huge difference in my life. Well, Karen, you make such a huge difference in my life. And, and a day does not go by now that Karen and I don't text each other. Mm. And it could just be good morning and, it, yeah. and nothing else. Just, you know, just checking on each other. And, and I tried when to they had all their things. No. Can I say something funny about myself? Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for it. <laughs> Donna has to interpret. I think she has some <laughs> mild form of dyslexia. And I say this openly because I'm an executive functioning coach. So I help kids learn online, Jackie, in, in high school mainly. And so, I mean, it's hard. It's real, as you know, online is really hard. So I, I, I'm always pronouncing the names wrong. Okay, see if you can figure out. And oh, Donna, no. see if you can figure out um, which pattern I'm talking about. Um, all right, um, Nicoletta. And she said to me, I've got the yarn for Nicoletta. And I'm like, I'm going on Ravelry going, I don't know a pattern called Nicoletta. And she's like, no, you sent it to me. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> right, and she sold me the yarn for it. And I was like, okay, N-I-N-I-L-C-H-I-K. It's the nil check. <laughs> <laughs> Now that is just the tip of the iceberg of what we right. do with these names. And she's like trying to decipher. <laughs> I'm talking oh, about 
laughing so hard at myself. I'm practically peeing my pants. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good knitting game that you've just invented. What is Karen knitting? <laughs> Maybe it's yeah. on bingo. Yeah, um, it could be like a newlywed game. Like, I say this, and what is the pattern? I think if you can say that pattern name, you can knit it without an issue at all. <laughs> but the fun well, part about that is we can laugh about it. She because, And she's always like, help me out here. What's the name? <laughs> well, so... Read my mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do you two, because um, Caitlin is always inspiring me and sending me, and she'll, leave, she'll send me things that she's like, this you, is so you. And I bet you two have come to know that about each other. Can you speak to that, how you've inspired each other and what, what you've knit because of one another? Well, Karen will often say to me, look at this beautiful green, because she knows I love green. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so... Gosh, what yeah, we're gonna I do? Lots of images from Instagram about, oh, I think this would look amazing on you, or I just love this green, or yeah, I, I, I I'm like, oh, I'm probably sending her too many things. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, it's Karen again, you know. <laughs> well, Jackie, your Lawrenson oh, with your. Oh, it's just beautiful. And we've carried Cocon before I even knew about you or your Lawrence. And I've always wanted to make something with it. But I didn't, I don't think that the Lawrence is right for my body, but it's right for Karen's body. And she's knitting it right now. And I'm, I finally found a pattern that to knit with oh. the, so this is my second um, Felix pullover. Oh, perfect oh, voice. But yeah. see, this is like my style, but Lawrenson is her style. And, she, and Karen wanted me to knit Lawrenson with her. And I was very honest with her. I said, Karen, I don't think it's right for my body. And she said, I think you're right because maybe the poofy sleeves weren't so much me. Yeah. But then th this is my second Felix by mm -hmm. Savory Knitting. I love this mm -hmm. pattern and I love the yarn. It's so beautiful. Oh, and it, just, it, it makes it sophisticated like whatever you knit in that it just like elevates it mm -hmm. yeah holy see that with white jeans and the necklaces you have on that's fantastic and I and there's it. yeah and there's karen's there's her lawrence in. oh, oh yeah. yeah isn't it beautiful i that just guys I just love this and when you put it on i was like oh i just yeah. i love the yarn i love everything about it Okay, I didn't helix it, so I'm just hoping no one. <laughs> I don't feel like that one. No, it matters. You can kind of get away with, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, and should we talk about like, do you have more things that you've knit because of one another? Looks well, like a pile. <laughs> we're getting ready because, uh, because yeah, of you. Be Go ahead. Oh, because of Jackie and Caitlin, we're going to do the, is it Letho or Letho? Letho. Letho. Think, we're getting ready. I think we decided May we're going to do that as a knit along. I think nice. there's four of us right now. Nice. Me, that is Karen, fantastic. her friend Asha, and my friend Paula here are going to do it. That's such a fantastic design. I was talking to Karen about it and she was like, oh, it's so, it looks difficult. I'm like, I didn't, other than Jackie's beautiful video that talks you through the crazy arm construction thing. I, I think it's such a manageable pattern and it's one of those patterns that's just such a joy to work with because they're new most of the techniques can be new to people and yes fun. yeah did you, you both knit it with um uh you stranded a mohair right we did we stranded it um wool folk far with mohair so wow. talk about like luxury <laughs> luxury yeah luxury on top of luxury yeah. right yeah. yeah i mean i yeah but i think it's one of those sweaters though that it you know you could do it with mohair you could do it with rustic it's just such a great boxy shape and mm -hmm. you know. so uh, talking about inspiration so this would be a dual inspiration the two of you and then partnering with donna um the the half wrap i was just like oh i so want to knit that and, Don, and Donna knows the colors I like, and she doesn't carry the Pearl Soho yarn. So this is... Oh. <laughs> is that a beautiful? 
Wow. That's the Kokon pink, right? Yeah, the tie dye mm -hmm. um, in the reverse. So, I mean, it's just so fun, right? And yeah. when I just exactly like what you two said about it and just knitting it when I know I need to calm myself down and center and I meditate and breathe while I'm knitting, but I don't, I can't look at a pattern, but I need to like calm my body down. This is what I go to. Like, this is what helps make me through those rough times, you yeah. know? And so and when it's done, you'll have all that goodness that you get to wear. I, I, it's funny because Amy Palco, she always calls them portable. I think, um, not altars, but almost like temples. I mean, she just thinks shawls are just the most feminine, sacred thing there is. And I just started watching her thanks to you. She's so, oh, I know. She's, <laughs> wow. I mean, like a spiritual goddess of, she is so beautiful. Thank you for that gift of wow. introducing us to her because when I'm waiting for the next Caddy Jack's podcast, <laughs> Well, it's coming soon. <laughs> Wait patiently for the next gift of Patty Jack podcast. Sorry. Love you guys. Seriously, like you are light and love, and you, you are, are so giving of yourselves. And I just, that's really my question to you is how do you do that? Like, how do you give so openly of yourselves in such, in such a way that's so relatable? I really want both of you to answer that question because you both do it in different ways, but you do it. And I'm just so touched by that. Oh, okay, now I'm crying. Oh. <laughs> I, I think, I, you know, I, I think part of it is when we started the podcast, we just had no we had no business plan. Like there was no plan. It was just like, let's do this. And um, I think the thing that was most surprising to me is, you know, I've never videotaped myself for anything. And I think we all know like what it feels like to photograph yourself. And then you look and you're like, Ugh. like th I, there was just none of that from the get go for me. And I don't think for Jackie either. And, um, and I think it was just like, it was just our friendship and, you know, I, I love and adore her and like, you know, and I think just putting that out there was, just, I mean, sometimes we watch them back because it's like, oh, I get to see my friend, you know, and <laughs> I just, because we had no plan or agenda for it, it's just us, you know, and I think that that's the thing that has been most surprising too, is how people have commented that they feel like they're, they're our friend and they're sitting with us and knitting or they, they feel like they know you and there is something about Instagram and putting something on video that brings people like it just it's authentic and it's it's real. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what people seem to respond to and mm -hmm. You know, and I think we're all, again, looking for connections. So that, that for me is, you know, I don't feel like, I mean, yeah, there are times where it does feel like we, you know, we have to put work and effort into putting this out there. And I will always say that Jackie's the one who's, you know, 90% of the effort, but that's, it doesn't, it, when, the, when we get the feedback, then it's like, oh, okay, it was worth it because it, it's yeah. just building on those connections and we never could have imagined the the people whose paths we've crossed, the opportunities that have come our way. You know, it, there was no way to imagine that. So it, we feel, I feel like it's a gift, you know, how lucky are we to have this creative outlet, we get to share it with others, and then to connect with others that feel the same crazy way we do about yarn. I mean, like, <laughs> What can you describe going to sort of an event to somebody like a yarn event that, who then they don't knit they're like I, I don't get it and it's like you're in this you know area with people who all are passionate about the same thing you know I'm sure it's the same thing for people who are like car buffs and you know yeah. right. a little bit of crazy <laughs> so. but I think but I think you both have this mindset of I am open to this and I, I do want to meet people and I do want to share it and I don't 
feel that on all podcasts. Oh. Like I don't, I don't, I, you guys are just open and wanting to learn and meet people and not everyone. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I've met in my life where people are like, I really don't have room for another friend. I'm like, mm. oh my God, like, how can you say that? Like, <laughs> like if someone comes into my life, I'm going to say yes, always. Like if I feel there's a connection, I'm never going to say, oh yeah, I don't want any more friends. I mean, but that's how you guys are. You're like always open. That's the feeling that comes across, you know, and oh, I just very love welcoming. that about you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. It's such a gift. Well, yeah. you. you know, it's, it's funny because I'm listening to that and I'm thinking about like when the life altering thing of like when my father died and he was in hospice and like mm -hmm. what hospice was for my family and what it was for my dad at the end of his life. I mean, my dad, um, like his, he had the most amazing death because he was an alcoholic addict ruined his career, you know, mm. and et cetera. And die, you know, and before he died, he was, he'd been homeless. He'd had all these things happen to him and had just been so plagued by his demons. But then the slow way he died and have, I mean, it was sudden, but it was slow enough that mm. the dying was like all of this storytelling and people coming to hospice and telling us about our father, these stories mm. we didn't know. And mm. like, and we had this experience basically over and over and over again, mm. where somebody would go in, they'd, and you'd give them a hug and it would be like a, yeah. they'd go in and then they'd come out and they'd had all these ante rooms for you to debrief. They'd come out, mm. and then you would get this like, incredible hug and then they'd sit down and we'd talk for hours and like mm -hmm. so and my dad like I mean the way he um he died with such peace and love and like was just sort of for he forgave himself you know oh. and so, um and and we could see all the beautiful things he'd done um that we didn't know about <laughs> and at any rate so it does seem like it does seem that there's a potential in every encounter to be touched and to meet someone and to be genuine in a way that you don't even understand. Mm -hmm. So we were trained in that and, and then and then my you know, we just professionally practice that as you must too with students and their families over and over mm -hmm. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. I yes. think it comes I think for me it comes from there because otherwise I would have been mm -hmm. I would be it just be, what is it called? Um, I don't remember the word, but sort of scheming for your approval, you know, because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just the, that's like the natural, that's what we're trained to do, I think, you know, instead of realize that there's like this grace and that we mm -hmm. can already have it and, and then and not try to hustle, not try to hustle for it, I already have it and then extend it. Right. Well, and I also think that you know, as much as we sort of put ourselves out there to put this out, to put it out there in the world, we've gotten so much more in return. You know, it's all like, it's like, it, I feel like we get, we, we get the goods, you know, like I, you, you appreciate the podcast, but like, we just, it just fills us up. And um, I think it's just such a gift to, to feel um, that energy from other people. Yeah, yeah. But you have to be open to it. And I think that's just what I'm saying and what you've said that you, yeah. whatever your life experience is, that you've been able to be open. And, and you can, you know, there's people that have open mindsets and people that have fixed mindsets. And they, I think they miss out, but you guys are just, you're there. I mean, you're just like, <laughs> you're, you're doing it. Okay, it's I'm open. I got to show the boot. That oh. goes. Yeah. Ooh, oh my cute. gosh! The whole outfit, I love. That's so good. Shoe cam. Do you? Do you yeah. Know and that? then I can still do that at fifty. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's impressive. Yeah. But I thought I'd 
bring in some humor and do a little well, boot camp. Tell us the whole outfit since we've got yeah. the shoes. Let's work okay, our way so up. These are um, um, from the Pittsburgh Mercantile, and I just love Susie so much and just her packaging. And oh. then you guys put me on to Melissa. I was going to wear the fringe ones, but they haven't arrived. Um, but I just, I mean, this is just my short look. I'm just wearing black jeans, and I've got this, I have this, Beast here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's adorable. You look so cute, Karen. That is. Oh. Yeah, you, I just, you just love, love it. it. I just and, and I um this was my homage to RBG when she died, mm -hmm. and I I called Donna from I have to make this now. <laughs> you know, like I was inspired by you guys, but then when she and I was just like, oh, I don't know if I could ever do this and. Then she just came up with the perfect yarn, and I have a, there's a, um, a knitting bag maker that made this gorgeous bag. It almost looks like it, I could use it as a purse that has the collar on it. Oh. It's a Northwest maker. I think she's called Nerdy Bird or something. Oh, anyway, yeah. oh, Nerd Bird her. Makery, maybe? Yes, thank yeah. you. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you. Karen. Thank you. <laughs> I need I'm, not all I'm not gonna spell it, but Art Williams. Yes, the designer. RBG. Yes. Did you yes. say the yarn yet, or was that at the beginning when I said? Oh, this is this so is wool folk far. And um, what is this though? Um, Th that's the Tove DK from wool folk. Yeah, they're both DK, but this is, and uh, Donna was so helpful that to make it pop. She said, you know, hold it in your left hand, whatever color is dominant. So obviously, anyway, um, I've learned so many valuable tricks from you guys and Donna on just, you know, make things look a little better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so inspired by Karen because she just, I, I don't know how she cranks things out as quickly as she does. She's well, amazing. Yeah. I mean, you're, you must constantly be knitting. I'm constantly knitting and the way my work is is that um it's really soothing in between my meets with my kids on zoom so it's part of my um i have some lavender and sage spray that i spray before and after like i prepare for each you know that i can be present for each kid nice. um and then i and then i have to knit um, but <laughs> another uh, this is, would be an indie um maker this is twisted willow oh um and this beautiful. is um gold wing and i love look at the sleeve oh beautiful it's beautiful um so i just but uh, donna is just amazing like i'll say i like i want to knit this and then she picks the perfect yarn and then i said i want to knit this and then she picks twisted willow and this is um merino worsted merino and linen Beautiful. Um, nice. And it's just so, so yummy. The, so. the way I found Twisted Willow Yarns is Kate is from Canada. And we have a lot of people that will send us little skeins of yarn here and there and ask, you know, would you be interested in carrying, you know, my yarn in your shop? And we've done a lot of yeses and a lot of noes just because either I feel like it's going to fit or it's not going to fit. Well, I got this beautiful box in the mail from this unknown person. This was just before COVID. And it was a beautiful gift wrap box with four skeins of yarn in it. And it had three skeins of the merino linen fingering weight. And then this one skein of a more rustic yarn. And a lovely note from this young lady about her yarn. And that right there just sold me. I thought she put so much in, not only was her yarn beautiful, but because she didn't just throw a skein of yarn in the mail, you know, with a post-it note. She went through so much to basically market herself and sell herself. And I think she died for us. We didn't get our order until after COVID. So no one, we were closed for, we closed in March and we didn't open back up to letting people in the shop until I think July or August, and we only let two people in at a time. So nobody knew about Twisted Willow, but we tried to market it a lot during our shutdown. And now we have her fingering weight 
and we have her mohair and we have her worsted and I've just ordered her DK and she's a delight to work with. You should follow her on Instagram. She has the most adorable redheaded little girl Red and they little just, girl. And they yeah. just got a labradoodle and it's just so nice to follow her and she's just, yeah. she's so, so nice to work with. And that's what I look for in people when we, you know, decide who we're going to bring in. Not that people that we've said no to were not nice and weren't lovely. They, they, they all are, but I just feel like there has, like, there has to be a connection for me. And, um, you know, another one is Rachel from Moondrake. She is a delight to work with. We love her yarn. Our customers love her yarn. Um, I could go on and on. Magpie fibers, that's spin cycle fibers. Knitting, that's what I'm knitting my kala in. I'm not very far. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That looks so You beautiful. got really far. Um, well, I, I, have I, what? I, I said, I see a cable needle in there. <laughs> oh, yes. It was, it was just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't master. Well, look, you know, I, I'm on wood needles, so I don't have pointy enough. I tried it. Okay. The, the technique works. I just. So I, I didn't I, talk, I didn't talk about it when on our first part because I wanted to say that like how we all are like you know need each other to get through a pattern so of course Jackie is working full time so she's not at my beck and call every time <laughs> I need her to save me so I started on the Cala and um and then I, don't, I can't remember where Karen had already started it and so I was like Karen can we just FaceTime so you can talk me through this? So she talked me through some part of the pattern and then I tried to talk her through. <laughs> I will say that I have discovered the joy of knitting without a cable needle. And it for this pattern, life altering. Because there are a million cables in here. Yeah. So no, I, I if I was on metal needles and had that pointy thing, yeah. it's just too much reaching behind. Yeah. On, on DK like that on my wood needles that are gotcha. not as but yeah no I have it saved because I'm I like, sent her a little bit of another project this is gonna work for with a billion cables yeah <laughs> anyway but you it has been fun to sort of knit along with you on yes I yeah. really loved 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 that I yeah. um but here's some twisted willow and and um this is called water lily and the reason I'm bringing it up is the big, it counts for a green. Mm. <laughs> Can you guys yeah. See that? yeah, it's beautiful. Um, for the, what's, what is that that you're part of, Donna? You're doing, you're giving a it's, whole bag away for the knit along. It's whatever. a great green knit along. There's a group of ladies from Instagram and Ravelry that started it. And because I love green, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> but I'm not participating in it like to win. I we made a donation <laughs> and um, a green bag. So, but I what don't know. No, 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 a green bag. She's so generous. When's the deadline for the green? I have. A, I feel like it might be March 31st, but I could be yeah, wrong. I think that's right. We'll so, wait to that. So, if you have anything green. <laughs> I got green from Donna, and, uh, but I haven't knit it yet. I got the spin cycle. Oh, oh, okay. Here we go. So this is Twisted Willow. This is um, this is the Wood Lane Pullover by Tammy Gore, mm -hmm. and I think yeah, that's the. I, I should have folded it the other way, but it's lovely. It's a worsted weight. It's mm -hmm. not as hot or heavy as most horses, but it's it's hot. I mean, it's definitely. You need a little Not bit of cold weather to wear. degree weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but. Donna, you were remarking on how Karen knit so much. The yarn, the whole owning a yarn shop, being able to knit, how does that work? Well, a lot of times people think if you own a yarn shop, you work, you knit all day. Mm -hmm. But no. truly, you don't knit all day. The only time I knit is I get up about 5 o'clock every morning. And I sit in my chair and I'll knit till about seven or seven thirty, and then I get ready to go to work. And then after supper, Don does the dishes, and I get back in my chair and I <laughs> knit till bedtime. So, um, but I used to be a monog, what I would consider a monogamous knitter. I would have a sweater, and I would have a shawl at one time, and that was it. And people would comment, "You knit so fast." 
And I would tell them, I don't really knit fast. I just knit one thing at a time, basically. Well, COVID has changed that for me. I have a bunch of <laughs> whips here, but it's okay. Um, it is what it is. It's well, fine. Show us, show, I mean, you wear, do you have anything more that you want to say on the, on the line of in working with people who make you, you sense that there's a story or you, that they just inspire you? Well, I will have to say that everyone that walks through our door, I have hopes that, you know, I can give them some sort of joy by having a yarn that they want or help them pick yarn for a pattern or if they just need a needle, mm -hmm. you just, I, I want to make them happy. I want to make their day no matter what. And we are so blessed that right now we only have one of our girls because of COVID working for us, but we have we have the most amazing staff and the most wonderful and caring and loving and giving people that work for us that there's such an extension of us and we don't have to worry about, are they going to say the right thing or are they going to say the wrong thing to somebody? We just feel so good knowing that we have people that will, will, will be just like we would, would be. They, they know how we want our customers to be treated and you know, it doesn't matter if they're going to spend a dollar or a hundred dollars, everybody's treated the same way. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. that's exactly so. the way I want school to be too like who cares if we're doing subtraction like it's really actually about love <laughs> <laughs> like feeling supported feeling like I can do this or I'm awesome because you know my friend helped me or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. What? I think Donna does that and you know I mean that's one of the things that just attracted her to me just on the customer level was, it's so obvious that her end in mind is to just make me happy as a customer. And and it, at first I thought, oh, that's just me. I mean, she makes <laughs> you feel like you're your own. <laughs> it is just you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love about her is that she's so joyful, like she does, like even if it's a needle, like you just, she'll, someone might come into the shop and she just lights up, like you just, I love that. I love that that's how she, with everyone, just mm -hmm. everyone, everyone's special. Mm -hmm. And Thank you. you know, it's so true. It's just, you don't, it's effortless. Well, maybe it's not effortless. But. Do, we, do we learn that from watching people like Donna or do you have any tips, Donna, like on how to practice that? Well, I have to tell you, it all goes back to my dad. And I might cry, sorry. But okay, I was kidding. You can Where's cry. The <laughs> cry. Um, oh, gosh, sorry. He was just such a good person. And I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> apologize. We love it. And it's Let's just, just say it. I, I got it from my dad. Okay. <laughs> sorry. No. I, I would, by the way, I just, that's just a testament to your love and, and, uh, and it's good to take a moment to let him in anyways and let him out. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm so sorry. One thing I'm going to tell oh. you is like, if, if we would go to the grocery store and if the cashier was cranky, let's say mm -hmm. my dad would say to me, you know, maybe she had a fight with her husband or maybe she's sick or maybe she can't pay her bills. And I, it's, I, it comes from him is where it comes from mm -hmm. watching so, him your whole life yeah yeah such a rare gift to to have that perspective on life you know and yeah. even if yeah. we just get a little glimmer of that that we can take up on our own it's it's so so important yeah the other I mean, thing he, go ahead the other thing he taught me was and I try and do this a lot too like when I go to the grocery store is to he would say you know you're the best cashier I've ever had in this store and the other day I went to the grocery store and I couldn't find the diet coke because it was buy two get oh, one free that's why I love and it. so I got up to the <laughs> register and there was two young people and they said did you find everything okay and I said well I can't find the diet coke it was, the shelves were empty and young Kayla was the bag person and Noah was my cashier and Kayla says, I'll go get it for you. How many do you want? And I was like, when she came back, I'm like, you guys are so awesome. And they're like, thank you. Because I think what happens is probably a lot in the grocery stores and other places, I would imagine, is people 
don't get the love. They don't get appreciation. They're trying to do the best that they can. And um, so anyhow, that was another thing my father, I loved going to the store with him because he was always, he was just always praising either the person that, you know, and he'd try and give them a tip, you know, the bag person. And they're like, no, I can't take a tip. It's like, come on, take a tip. So I don't know. It just, it just, I learned so much from my dad. And um, my dad had a grocery store. That's how I learned about, you know, working, re- not really, I guess, you know, learning from my father. He, he mm-hmm. treated everyone so kind. And if a, there was a kid, a child that came in the store and came up with, you know, the, the cash register and didn't have the money to pay for it, my father gave it to them, the kids. He was like, take it. And then there might have been a guy like behind them buying a six pack of beer. And he said, I'm going to charge your quarter extra so you can pay for that. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But the people didn't care, you know, because he took care of everybody. So I think I I get a lot of, I I have a lot of my dad in me. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing this. Oh, thank you. Sorry. That's that's (laughs) really what our what we saw in common was my dad was the same way. I mean, my dad was a doctor and he was, he was at a medical hospital. So he taught and he was the most favorite teacher every year. So they had to make it the top three. And he would, uh, when we came home, he was present. Like he never talked about work. He would play with us when we were little. And then we'd have all these amazing dinners at night and he'd ask, questions and ask us about ourselves and then when we were older he was so interested in our friends he was always talking about other people he was always so interested in other people and yes that kindness like he had that old-fashioned bedside manner of just a gentle gentle person and when he retired we went to this retirement party and I got up after all these people spoke about him and I just said, I want you all to know that my father has never told me about a single one of all these accomplishments and what you know and what, how you see him as this professional and this very, you know, accomplished and recognized physician. And he's just my dad. I mean, he's just so kind and nice and loving and yeah, my dad would do the tips too, like he wanted to tip people. I mean, it, our dads just have a lot in common is how to be gentle and loving and always focused on the other person and bringing, you know, he'd be so interested in my friends to the point where mm-hmm. when I was older, um, he would invite like one my best friend on vacations with him and my mom and <laughs> other siblings that could go. I mean, it was just that he was just special and just never drawing attention to himself. That's what Um, And maybe I draw attention to myself, but I feel like now what I'm doing, I see my dad in um, being able to teach and help other people. Like I had been in sales and marketing for like 30 years and I just didn't really like it except the aspect of helping my customers. (laughs) I didn't really like sales and I, I, but I was good at sales because I was, I wouldn't sell them anything I didn't know or believe in, you know, but now to be doing this work and working with children and families, it's just so rewarding and I feel like I'm just channeling my dad and his ability to teach and you know he would say disease may look differently in different people and he would show art like he'd show a painter and he'd show four different pieces of art and he said what do these have in common and people would say well I don't know and he said well it's the same artist and that's what disease looks like it looks different in different people disease presents it I just he was just creative like he was a creative teacher and you know, just, you know, he's talking about the stages of disease, like this was the stages of this artist. It was Winslow Homer, who had a lot of different styles and just his mm-hmm. progression. I just loved how he mm-hmm. was just so creative in his teaching. And I just, you know, I'm sure you, Jackie, with you, just like, I'm new to teaching, but I'm always just, it gets down to knowing the child and just like, sometimes I just throw it all out the window and just focus on the kid, just like, where are you at and what's going on and how can I just love you? Just be present with you. And we're not working today. Like you're not in shape. Like we're just like, this is where we are. And that's my dad. That's definitely my dad. So we just have this love of our dads that we feel have tried, have given us an example of how to be a good person in life. And that's really what life is. It's just, being a good person and being treated like you would like to be treated. So, you know, do unto others kind of thing. 
it sounds old fashioned, but that's he. Yeah. Like he would just turn the other cheek, and I was like, that takes such strength. Instead of responding, the strength to just sit with that and mm -hmm. be strong in that silence and love and compassion. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you both. <laughs> 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 yeah I because it's a whole it's the work of a lifetime and you got to see two men master have a lifetime to master and then it, I mean and we compare ourselves we're probably not doing it as well as they did it oh I know <laughs> I'm not I know I'm not either but I try <laughs> right I just look up every day and say today's another day and I'm just going to try to be the best person I can be yeah I'm not going to be perfect but I'm just going to keep trying yeah all right, I'm gonna get back to you and let you know because my big pet peeve, like I'm pretty mild, but I used to be a runner and runners always have to face traffic when they're on the roads. And in COVID, <laughs> there's all these walkers, right? And me included, <laughs> and they don't know that. So they walk on the wrong side of the road and then I always have to, the wrong side of the road, they're not facing traffic. And I just feel this like, you know, all my COVID rage right there. Like, it's ridiculous. I don't do anything to them, but inside <laughs> I'm like, don't you know that you're supposed to? And so if I could actually practice, like, because my sister's just like, they're getting out for a walk. It's so great. <laughs> but anyways, so like I, because I practice it in a lot of ways, but not there yet. I have room to grow. On we my all do. I'm we all do, yeah. Judgments. I mean, you a little bit more than others, but <laughs> true. true. Oh. And you know, and and again, I just want to say, like, by the way, Donna, like you apologize like four times for crying. Again, it's like such a part of the human experience. And who wouldn't want to love him? And who wouldn't want to be moved by somebody like mm -hmm. having a life that touches you? You know, like so. I'm so glad. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we we brought this out to fan Donna. <laughs> Are you feeling she feels it? <laughs> so she I just want to say one of my favorite things, Jackie, when you're talking and I you say all these amazing, beautiful things and like I write them down. And then I see Caitlin and I love this because I right, but also I know how much you love her and Caitlin has the driest sense of humor like <laughs> she is so Caitlin you are so dry and you are so funny and it's like you slip in these hilarious little comments and I just like I'm like I see you like you are so <laughs> so funny and I just like make me laugh like I'm just like oh my god <laughs> yeah sweet of you. I will tell you that the whole Zoom thing, I told Jackie that like, I, I can't do Zoom because I'm all about the response and there is no response on Zoom. <laughs> okay, right now I'm highlighted, but you know, so it drives me crazy because I, 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 you know, it's that comedian in me that needs to like get the response. So wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad Karen can still notice even over Zoom. I loved having tiny Caitlin though. Like people <laughs> hated it, but I just felt like yep. in control. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like it better when Caitlin's not so tiny. Thank <laughs> you. Me too. Thank I you. like her mother agrees. <laughs> yes, you look fabulous. I want to see a full I want to see you both equally. That's funny. Yeah. Well, well Jackie just likes to be in charge. <laughs> at it. You have to focus on what you're good at. Back to Donna, though, and Fanny, because it is 70 where she's, where she's at. And I have so, a window open. Hey, Miss Donna, can you, can you share some of your wonderful, like, little gems that are coming up, the overseas <laughs> issues that are coming up? Oh, my gosh, you guys are going to die. Can you tell them about the bag and the yarn? Because I'm like, oh, oh. my God. I think the marketer is speaking. <laughs> what I'm good at. Oh, I don't even have an example to show you, but you can go look on um, our Instagram. So there is a company in Amsterdam. There's two ladies, Hester and Sylvie, and they make these beautiful bags. They're called Oh Wow! Exclamation point. And I think it's dot Amsterdam. 
And I first saw them in Edinburgh at Stephen and Penelope's booth. And I bought a bag. It's upstairs. And they hand paint the bags. And then there you go. Yes. And that's one of ours. It has and her logo on it. She had them made with her logo on it. Well, what they do is they, so they hand paint them and hand sew them, the two ladies, and then um, they, whatever the design is, they're exclusive to the, that shop. So um, like Stephen and Penelope, um, Lobby and Amy's, there's several shops. When, in what's the one in London? Wool and I can't remember. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, so so they're on their way to us. They've been shipped. We, they should be here this week, I hope. Um, but like we're really excited. We're going to be the, the first U.S. stock is for them, which um, they told me that I was the most patient American they have ever known. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. You were the first U.S. stockist for the Playstro when that was all. Yes, happening. that's oh, right. That's when we first heard about you. Oh. Like, North Carolina. <laughs> like, what? Why do we have to order it through you North Carolina? Well, I just realized, too, when you said that, Jackie, I, I was one of those customers that reached out to you at some point, Donna, and then, of course, never followed up, but it was about a Playstro bag. I remember you were like, so sweet in your response to me and like just let me know you know uh, <laughs> to this moment like oh that was you because it was <laughs> to me a random I'm going to reach out to you know whoever has you know that's so funny that was <laughs> so so Karen she does treat everyone that way <laughs> I, I know I try to keep it in balance that's okay <laughs> <laughs> No, that's what I love about Donna is that that this is just the way she this is the way she rolls, you know? <laughs> this is just the way that she is just it is so beautiful. It is just you just shine, you just radiate just love and joy. And I just feel so lucky that we developed this friendship. But oh. I mean it's just so genuine. Okay, but here's the most dangerous thing. So I go through my list <laughs> and then and then she says is there anything else I can help you with? <laughs> That's a good diet impression. <laughs> like, hey, is there more? Oh, <laughs> well, I didn't want to leave anything out. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so since I talked about Nanilchuk. Nanilchuk? <laughs> That's pretty close. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but then she does like, oh, how about skiing cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> and this is my third color which was my nightmare magpie disaster now you can't really see it but it has the flex of the of the um oh nice the pink mm. and the blue in it it's a gray but it's just i could not wind it i mean it's the softest swanky swank i love it but i couldn't i couldn't get it to wind and i was like Some, the next time i thought i'm gonna have to have it wound <laughs> Sometimes merino, cashmere, and nylon, well, all three of those are so slippery when you put them on your ball winder, and Karen had a terrible... I've had yarn <laughs> fly off the thing, you know, it's like, yeah. So we're seeing sort of a palette for Karen, but Donna, you have this gold on, and then you show, do you, like, tell us what you, what you're wearing, and, and also... Uh, the next question is having a yarn shop, I imagine, to, after you say that, I just want to know about how color has changed for you because you've gotten to be around it so much. Yeah, well, I'm wearing Love Note, and this is knit with Lobby and Amy, the singles, and her Kumo, mm -hmm. and the color is caramel. So I am really a brown, green, gold girl i can't i don't feel like i can wear pink although wait till you see but, this <laughs> although oh, see, yeah, the, look the, the, green, the green has to be there so this is oh, this is bean and olive by andrea mallory yeah and the yarn is a young lady that lives in greenville south carolina her name is monica and her company is yarn experiments and she is lovely i first met monica as a customer and then 
she started dyeing yarn and this is her so everything's about a monkey her logo is a monkey so this is her monkey tweed dk and so the yarn's so pretty so i think i can wear pink a little bit i bet you could wear pink a lot well you know what's really funny is i'll see a beautiful skein of yarn and what when i first opened the shop i had to really consciously order yellows and oranges and colors that other people would like not just what i like and i'll pick up a skein of yarn and i'll say oh my gosh that's beautiful so i'll go up to don my husband because he knows me so well and i'll go what do you think and he'll go you'll never wear it or <laughs> he'll say you'll wear it and so he knows me so well but i was really excited about throwing that pink in there and i think that i can definitely wear that mm -hmm. but and the navy that I, I just, I would walk by the Cocon every day and I would say to it, I want you to become something. I just don't know what. And then so after, you, you do talk to your yarn all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I talk I to my shop to a lot. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. So I, I'm, it's really easy for me to pick lots of different colors knowing that some of them I would never knit with, but I, I've learned through the years what our customers, everybody's different. Everybody, even, you know, like Jackie, what you're wearing, not everybody would pick a yellow like that, but it looks beautiful on you. And sometimes when I bring a yellow in the shop, I think, oh my gosh, wonder if anybody will ever buy it. And then somebody comes and buys a sweaters quantity of it because they, you know, they love yellow. So, mm -hmm. um, I think having the shop hasn't changed me that much as far as what color choices I pick for myself, but it, it makes it easier to bring color into the shop, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Just, just from doing it for a while now, we're in our 12th year. So um, just seeing how things have evolved and seeing that, okay, yellow will sell or orange will sell. How, how stressful is it trying to anticipate trends or do you feel like you operate from a different place of knowing your customer and knowing how you do things so in the beginning when there weren't all these indie dyers and we didn't have all these young designers and the, the most of it was um commercial yarn companies who had designers designing for them and we would have reps come to the shop with the spring summer line or the fall winter line. And it felt like those lines never really took off for us. Now, because we're, we have cold climate here, not as cold as other places, but people knit with wool all year round here. And I would say that cotton and linen and the plant-based fibers are not, as people don't knit with them as much. Our customer base, anyhow, maybe there are people, but uh, so we don't see reps anymore because things have evolved so much. We don't um, carry really too much of a manufactured kind of yarn. We carry all mostly indie. Mm -hmm. And I order wool all the time. I have a couple of cottons. I do, there's an indie dyer in um, Memphis that does cotton and it's beautiful but for the most part i think people just if you like to knit with wool you're going to knit with wool year round mm -hmm. so i don't think right. we, i don't really like look at the um pantone colors i just i don't know i just i guess i go with my gut i guess i would say mm -hmm. your gut is good mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you <laughs> well i like um the the linen how these indie dyers are doing the merino the linen. i do too and, yeah um my two favorites are the twisted willow and moondrake wow she's yeah. so fabulous too mm. that's what i'm knitting my collar with oh let me see so this is um this is how i doing this this yeah. is it's it's real linen. i started this almost a year ago and i haven't done knitted it on it at all but Karen did say something about like knit two rows a day on something and I'm gonna start doing that. But this is Hohe's Age of Gold and this was when we first oh. got Twisted Willow's um, Merino Linen Singles. So I'm at the point to 
do the border. Oh my gosh, look at that color. But I haven't, I've been knitting sweaters more than anything else. Mm -hmm. But I'll get back to it. But the, it is the merino and linen. It's so nice and light and it's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I just love knowing the people that have dyed the yarn. There's another company that we carry. It's called, I'm, I'm not very good with French. It's called Tole Matin, and mm -hmm. she's from France. Her name is Lori Ann, and I don't remember how I found her, but her when I saw her yarn, it was just beautiful. So I sent her an email, and I said I would, would be interested in carrying your yarn in my shop, and she wrote back, and she said, I'm flattered, but why do you want my yarn when there's all these other beautiful indie dyers out there? And I said, there's something about your yarn. I don't know. It's just beautiful. So... <laughs> We've been carrying it now for several years. It's a huge hit in our shop. Well, last, let's see, when did we go to Edinburgh last? It would have been 2019, right? Because 2020, there was no, we weren't. Okay, so in 2019, we went to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and Lorianne and her sister flew from France to Edinburgh. And because she thought, oh, I might want to be a vendor there next year. But she speaks no English and I speak no French. So, <laughs> so we met up at the festival, her sister and myself and a couple other ladies, and we went to lunch. So the whole time at lunch, we're on Google Translate <laughs> talking to each other. And it, we had more fun. And it was just, she's wonderful. She's just, she, when she got married, she sent me pictures of her wedding. And it just, there's such a connection. And I love that about our indie dyers. I love knowing who they are and they're just not you know just somebody that is dying yarn it's just it puts a whole new meaning on it for me knowing who I'm supporting yeah. and um you know oh and a lot of people do share more intimate things that you know about their lives that I wouldn't talk about here but it makes me feel good that you know if something's going on and they send me an email and we chat about it and right so um, I have to ask you, I'm cutting you off because I like you were you were saying there's a, such a connection. And in my brain, I was wondering, what is a connection? And is it is it an exchange of stories? Like, is that what it is? Or I mean, because you have had this opportunity to encounter lots of different people and work with them. Like, but I know from our our viewers, a lot of people do feel isolated and don't feel connected. So do you mind speaking just a little bit about like cultivating connections and what that, how that works in your life? Well, I think what happens is I always try to, when I send an email to like, if I see a yarn, I want to carry. And I guess the initial response to my email from that person will kind of solidify whether, you know, I want to go to the next step or not, you know, about carrying just, um, gosh, I, I feel like, so the connection, I guess, would be family, you know, are, are they raising kids? Are they a single mom or just a single person? And how am I, as a business, helping to support their livelihood? And um, I don't know, did I answer your question? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a start. It's interesting because uh, you talked about how you show up on email, yet another layer, not just the grocery store, because I know I can write, I, I, as you were saying that, I was like, shit, I have sent <laughs> on Instagram messages that have been very cursory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. You know, well, I mean? we've already established you're a terrible person. I know, you know I'm the bad one, so that's fine. <laughs> but you know what, like, like. Do you try to be intentional like all the time or just most of the time or just, I know it's not a formula. I, to, I understand that. But just if we're leaning towards, the way I was asking the question really was more like, if you feel isolated and you really don't even know how to become more connected, what, what would you do? Like what little tiny steps do you do? You probably don't know this because you're so good at it and you do it naturally. So I'm asking, it's like when you, like they did 
and I'm giving you time to think while I tell this very <laughs> boring story. In, in teaching, they interview readers who are very effective readers and they ask them to think about what are the sub skills to be an effective reader and then those readers go oh well i reread or if they mention something i go and look it up or da, 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 da. there's a whole list of things and and if you're not a skilled reader you don't know to do any of those and you just say oh i'm a terrible person i can't read well mm -hmm. etc so i would say you're a skilled at, at being a human being who connects with other humans, like, and you probably haven't been asked about how do you how do you replicate that if you're not, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, <laughs> well, I, just to chime in, I I think that um, what it seems, Donna, that you do so well is that you have this amazing business that's thriving after 12 years and, and we can all imagine how hard it is as a small business owner and all the trying times to keep things going. But it sounds like you operate, a, the way you operate is about how can I help that person? How can I support this indie dyer? How can I connect with this person as opposed to if I do this, then it will make my business thrive. It seems like you are outwardly leaning of, and your business, you know, is successful because of that as opposed to what all the, I mean, I, if you look at your website as an outsider, the lines you carry are like, Oh, that one. Oh, that one. Like, it, I mean, it's astounding, but I think I so you, you cultivated something truly beautiful, but it's, it really is obvious after this conversation that for you, it's about, you know, making that connection with the beauty that's out there to support everybody else. And then you reap the benefits, I'm sure in many ways, financially in terms of your business, but I think it's so authentic that you have continuously discussed how you want to do something good for the other person. And that's just beautiful in a business. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and I, I just, cause I think Donna has a hard time saying what she's so amazing at. <laughs> um, but what I've observed um, in our conversations in that she was an ER nurse and operating nurse um and her dad and this i think what donna has is very high uh emotional intelligence coupled with these skills of um i'm putting on my executive functioning hat of organization mm -hmm. and um just the love of yarn so she's she what she, I think you can't or won't because you're so humble is that you have a very high emotional um, intelligence and curiosity. And I love what Brene Brown says about vulnerability. I think you're just naturally vulnerable and brave. And I love her last thing that she says, and you're not awkward, but just that I'm just going to be myself too, genuine. So that sort of combination of emotional intelligence, and then you're highly organized and you have systems in place. You've got a strong tech background. I mean, she, Donna basically went from not having stuff online to, oh my gosh, it's COVID and that's how I'm gonna survive. I mean, like that, like she did it and it was up and she had a website in April. I mean, that is just amazing. But I think People think that they have to acquire knowledge and that's what makes them interesting. I think it's the emotional side, the connection side, okay. emotionally connecting. And that's why I was just so attracted to Donna. Like I was just like, I see that and that's what I want in my life. And that's why I said I was stalking her like with the polite, sweet little, you know, like I just wanted that in my life. That's what I wanted. So I'm someone that, you know, I'm, I was willing to take a risk and that's what I've done during COVID is I'm willing to take a risk and risk rejection or it's not going to work, but there was no risk with Donna. I mean, she was just like, you know, <laughs> you're so, so sweet. Thank you, Karen. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I think it is. I think there's emotional intelligence that once you just, if you've practiced it all your life, you're not, you can't really identify it like that. You're just like, that's the way I am. You can yeah. cultivate it. We can all cultivate it. I've worked on it in my life 
and especially with what I'm trying to do now to cultivate those skills more and I look back at my daddy and be like, well, how can I channel my dad? Like, how can I be more like him? Um, but Donna's just gifted, just doesn't naturally effortlessly. And well, I always, even from the time I was a little girl, I wanted to be a nurse. And um, as soon as I graduated from high school, I went to nursing school and I worked as, a, like Karen said, I worked as an emergency room nurse and then an operating room nurse and then I went into IT. But I always just wanted to help people. And I feel like the shop is an extension of that. You know, and there are days, you guys, where people will come in and um, not for yarn, but for emotional support. And sure. we're there, you know, we'll, yeah. whatever they need. Mm -hmm. I've, countless times we've driven people to the hospital for outpatient surgery or they to appointments. They don't have family. We have... We do wellness checks on people. Like if we have, we know there's people that live alone and if we don't see them or hear from them two or three days, we'll pick up the phone and call, make sure that they're okay. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of it does come from, from being a nurse and from just um, wanting to nurture people and take care of people. Mm -hmm. so the yarn shop's just kind of an extension of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Oh lucky, my gosh. Lucky us, right? <laughs> Oh, I did not expect this conversation. I am so grateful. <laughs> I oh. mean, we just sort of intuited it on, <laughs> like I said, on the bingo. We have to have, I mean, we <laughs> know through the, but I mean about your friendship and about, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Again, just you guys are such a, such a bright spot during mm -hmm. COVID and I just really, I've, I think I've, I think I'm on round two, starting again, watching the podcast over. Because <laughs> there's well, just not enough Caddy Jacks in my life. Oh and my if God. I'm feeling down, I just go and watch a Caddy Jacks um, episode. And I just love your friendship. You guys are an example of just how loving and accepting you guys are of each other. And that's a gift to me of just how to be a better friend. Um, I think I'm a pretty good friend, but you know, you're, you're a very good friend. <laughs> I well, love the. Well, we <laughs> so look forward to the opportunity when we can all be together um, in the future. And it's just like, those are the things that I just like, cannot wait to just get out of this box here, this yellow box. <laughs> <laughs> you all and 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 sort of have time to connect in real life too that would well, be wonderful such, i mean i know you guys you guys are celebrities for us for us but and no i mean you don't act like that at all but it's just really i mean i just feel so lucky to be on your show and it was you know i just you guys are just um, i've never really been into poetry but jackie you got me into poetry i like <laughs> I, who who knew? And you told me that you didn't have this one. You lost her. I know. <laughs> and thank you for something. I'm here. Um, Mary Oliver's oh, dog song. Oh, um, oh. And I want to give it to everybody that I know that has a dog because I'm like, just, I need to send this to you, Donna. You're you have a favorite? Um, you look I, for a while. You look for a minute. Maybe you'll see a favorite. Um, um, actually, Luke. Okay, let's hear it. Um, okay. Luke, I had a dog who loved flowers. Briskly, she went through the fields, yet paused for the honeysuckle or the rose, her dark head and her wet nose, touching the face of everyone with its petals of silk, with its fragrant rising from the air. Oh, I picked a long one. Sorry. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Into the air where the bees, their bodies heavy with pollen, hovered and easily she adored every blossom. Not in the serious but careful way that we chose this blossom or that blossom. The way we praise or don't praise, the way we love or we don't love, but the way we long to be that happy in the heaven of earth, that wild, that loving. Mm. And my dog is 
almost 11 and she is everything to me. And so this book was just like, why haven't I, you know, I, it's just amazing. Like, it's just every story and the illustrations, like I, this is your little, looks like Willow. It does look like Willow. Aww. Um, anyway, um, thank you, Jackie, for that gift, because um, it's not like I'm going to go out and read Yates or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> we, we read Yates before you got on the podcast. Did oh, you? What? <laughs> let, 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 let us be clear. We did not read it. We so did when not... you go back and watch, you will have your Yates for today. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to have it read to me. Thank you. You are. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. And and Donna, do you have any knitting dreams? Like, <laughs> you know, post, whatever, whatever's coming up. Any knitting dreams? Um, well, you mean as far as things I want to knit or? Oh, this... it's just anything. Like this whole world, you know, dreams. Dreams. Hmm. <laughs> like, like, well, formally travel to like Rhinebeck and think like, are those things that I've never been to Rhinebeck, but I've been to Vogue. I know. Well, the reason I've never been to Rhinebeck is October in Black Mountain or North Carolina mm -hmm. is a really busy time of year because the leaves are turning and we yeah. have a lot of tourists. And it's just not the best time for me to leave the shop. Mm -hmm. Had I known about you two at Vogue last year, I would have been stalking for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> <There's always> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but the, the, really the only, I've never been to Maryland Sheep and Wool. I think that's how you say it. But I've been to Edinburgh twice. Mm -hmm. And I've been to Vogue, I think, three times. So um, I would love to go to Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. I would love for that to happen. Mm -hmm. I would love to knit the half and half wrap. I need to get started so I can meet y'all on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet you on whatever hill, whatever month when you get it done. So don't okay. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come to you. You can oh, pick I the hill. I love that. <laughs> I, get, I think one of the things that I miss is having all the people in the shop. And um, I have to get my year straight here. So what must have been 2019, we did what we call an indie extravaganza at our shop. So it was the weekend after Rhinebeck. And we had 15 indie dyers and or we had a jewelry maker and bag maker. And um, it was amazing. The amount of people, I was floored when I looked out the window at like 930 and the people were lined up down the street waiting to get in. And I felt like we did something that people wanted and they were so happy and so 2020, when we couldn't do it, we did it virtually. We had all of our vendors do a, a half an hour block and do it virtually. But just the response of people, the vendors and the people that came to shop and how much fun they had and how they wanted to come back. And then other people who I guess saw it happen on Instagram. I got so many messages from people that dye yarn, people that make jewelry, I'd love to be in your extravaganza next time. And it, that I would love for that to come back. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I miss, I miss our yarn crawl. It was always on Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And from the very beginning, we, we never are open on Sunday. But for Mother's Day, we always open from 12 to 4. We'd have mimosas and cupcakes. Mm -hmm. And oh. it was so <laughs> fun because a lot of mothers and daughters would come together and uh, initially people would say well it's mother's day i can't come on mother's day and then the mothers were like it's mother's day i'm coming on mother's day my damn I, day that's what right. i want <laughs> so i i miss that I, I look forward to um having people back and i miss our ladies that would come all the time and sit in it and um i miss that that's a big thing i miss but I, I honestly feel we're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time, but we're definitely going to get through this. And um, I feel like we're going to be back to normal. I always think back to the, um, the great influenza of, influenza of like 1800s or whatever it was. 
how many people were sick and how many people died, but they didn't have all the science and technology we have now. So if they got through it, certainly we're going to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. well, that's what I look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for all the posts of your of your customers in their masks with their bowls oh. <laughs> because those really I mean outside of the knitting they are this like we're getting through this they like they tell us that as as we get on our Instagram feed yeah and I always tell them I say smile and they'll say <laughs> you can't see my smile I say oh yes I can because you're smiling with your eyes so and they <laughs> yeah and again you know you don't always see a lot of yarn shops focusing so much on the taking of the pictures and posting on Instagram. That's just another thing I love about Donna is she just wants to like highlight your success, you know, like you did it, you finished, I'm, oh. you know, I'm going to take a picture and, you know, I and love then, those it, shots. It makes me so happy when people come in, you know, wearing their knits and they're like, you know, yeah. and I always like, oh my gosh, <laughs> right. and they love it. They just, and I love it. I, I, I feel yeah. like it's such a sense of accomplishment, especially their first sweater or, you know, something, their first something, you know, or even their 50th. I mean, I said, yeah. Ooh, you're done. You want to show it off. Absolutely. And the funny thing is, is when you go wear it at work, half the time people are like, don't even notice. So you have to go to the yarn shop where they're actually going to give you the the love, <laughs> the love you need. Exactly. What's really nice too is not just us noticing, but other customers in the store. We have the best customers. They'll they'll go up to a total stranger and go, "Oh my gosh, what are you wearing? And what yarn did you use?" And you know, just people wanting other people to feel good. It's it's such a nice community. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. Yeah. So. Well, we cannot thank you ladies enough for joining us today. Thank and you. Thank you, you, did for it, us. you did it. <laughs> you only made you cry four times. We <laughs> right. you ask, you, ask you difficult questions. <laughs> well, you guys are so wonderful. We appreciate you so much. And thank you so much for having us. I, oh, I just, yeah. I can't wait for the day to get to meet all three of you in person. <laughs> <laughs> That's like crazy. crazy. I know. We know. It just, it's to have this friendship, this special friendship. And thank you guys for all you do too. And what an honor to be on Caddy Jack's Knits. Absolutely. And, and just to talk about Donna and how much I adore oh. her. Like just <laughs> what a thank you. I just, she yeah. has just made COVID doable. <laughs> And talking about the after, I read this, like, getting ready for the after. And I think that's good, too, to be in this, recognize that it is a state of impermanence that we're in. It really is impermanence. And, you know, still living in the present moment. But I think it's important to be preparing for after. And what are we going to do? And we're going to be with our half and half. half <laughs> yeah. I can't say that name either, right? <laughs> I, if it's anything like the small scale of my own life, any time I've suffered and I've processed it, I come through the other end better and more grateful and I've learned something. So yeah. I hope our after has that same possibility. <laughs> I think it will. I think, you know, when we're in the midst, in the depths of it, it's, it's hard to imagine. Yeah especially now we've been doing this for a year but um and it's gonna be it's gonna be a little awkward in the beginning to not wear a mask or feel comfortable but i think that um I, we'll, we'll get there we have to there's yeah. you know we will and we'll, we'll be at festivals again and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gathering and hugging and everything exactly i do miss hugging i do too <laughs> <Group> hug. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> or, or an elbow. <laughs> That's kidding. That's not happening. Okay. All right, ladies. Well, thank, thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, say goodbye. I wish we didn't have to, but you're like, okay. <laughs> <Next it's> time. <laughs> I'm back anytime. We're just here. We're just here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.